58, the Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast. What's up? Who, me? I'm Dave Z. Who, who are these people over here? We got the guy who imagines floating kitchen sinks in Evil Dead 2, Christian. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> it was I there. It was it there, was but it wasn't there. a kitchen sink. It, it's a stove. <laughs> it's a stove, exactly. Yeah. That's oh! what I thought it was. Yeah. The whole movie went down two points because there was no sink. <laughs> And this guy over here, oh no, who, who imagines who imagines floating Jedi's at the end of the river. <laughs> you fucking ass. I'll stick by it. Woo. I'll stick by it. Yeah, how about that, huh? Episode fifty-eight, the Evil Dead franchise. You're... Headites versus Deadites. By the way, oh, nice. just just because we were talking with video and pointed at one another, Brandon's the goofball with the ghost visions at the end of. Uh... The ritual. I'm it the goofball. It makes ball. perfect sense. Doesn't it have to be ghostly. They don't have to be yeah, the blue and see through. Fuck off. <laughs> 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 Can't even have an intelligent conversation with these guys. <laughs> it's always intelligent. You, the it listeners, is. you get me. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We show. were supposed to have a. We were supposed. To, <laughs> 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 we were supposed to have a special guest tonight. And uh, I want I want to give her a shout out because Lauren Ashley Carter was going to make a return to the show like she did with Hellraiser because she just came in. If you guys recall, she came in, she did part one and then she split and we had a great time with her. She was going to come on after about a year. I talked to her the other day. She's been very busy. She's in the UK. Anyway, very busy girl. Yeah, Cheerio. You know. Cheerio. Yeah. Uh, Hello, Gavna. Yeah. <laughs> I think we always do that anytime anything English comes in. What's that, love? <laughs> Hello, Governor. Watch a Doctor Who on the telly, are you? <laughs> so Lauren's good. Imitation Girl is out. I just wanted to 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 promote it because I watched it and it, it's really good. And her performance is really good. So uh, maybe more on that next show. But check it out because you know I was gonna ha- we were gonna have her on and talk about Imitation Girl for a few minutes and talk about some Evil Dead. So she's not here. So I gotta say that. But but I I, I do have a surprise. I do have a surprise because we couldn't get Lauren Ashley Carter here. I oh, thought no. I might do something else just for shits and gigs. Oh, shit. Uh, no, no, no. It's a good surprise. Oh. It's a real good surprise. <laughs> I was wondering why I saw this fucking lurking on Skype. Oh, oh man. Brandon and gentlemen. <laughs> Guess who's back? Oh. oh, again, Mr. Watson's back. Fucking yes. tell us. My first F-bomb on a podcast. Keep it in. <laughs> I'm telling your son, I can't believe it. His p- his picture just popped up in my screen there. I'm like, hey, is that Watson? That's a Dave Z huh? before picture. Oh my god, that's awesome. that's awesome. No, I'm happy to be here, Dave. Yeah, it was like, yo, it's a surprise to everybody. Let's do this. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That this is yeah. going to be out before the next episode of Horror Corridor. <laughs> well, there's no next episode. In fact, I'm actually here to offer Brandon Horror Corridor since he's trying to go solo now after nearly uh, leaving last episode. Or la- last, uh, I've been trying to get show. out for the last uh, two and a half years. Yeah. Oh, well, Horror Corridor is all yours, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. And, and once it's all ours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can, can I replace Brandon? Yeah. <laughs> Brandon 2.0 is better than Brandon 1.0. <laughs> I breathe. I breathe. I breathe. I breathe. <laughs> it's a switcherino. It's a step in the right direction. <laughs> Man, you guys look so sexy tonight. Oh my god! Hold on, I gotta like I painted over my webcam because I got nervous about about the FBI. Oh my god! Look at you guys. I have people at work that do that. I thought that was crazy. You actually put something over your webcam, eh? I did. Yeah, I did. But Come? <laughs> you know, it, it's I can I can take it off. I can take it off for you, Christian. I have something over my webcam, too. Yeah. My dad's paranoid. <laughs> for real. That's what? not a joke. What, what are you yeah. guys talking over here? What is this? Like, fucking people can music? hack in and people watch were, Yeah, Russians. They're worth, like, they, they love to <laughs> hack into stuff and watch like the Dental Front Office channel. This so is where I masturbate, off? too. Yeah, I don't want Putin to see how I'm masturbating. Are you serious? Is he cupping his own balls? I don't want to that. Dave's not even trying to get political about this. I'm, I'm bugging out because I jerk Putin off. Putin that back. <laughs> I've, I've never done that. Masturbated? Uh, when? Uh, In the last hour? Uh, <laughs> actually, the way... Myself, so I don't even want to touch myself. I heard that on the show this morning as of uh, today... 
you know, listening to your show back and you said you didn't want to touch yourself. I used that joke in another forum. I, I hope you're okay with that. You use jokes all the time. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've literally contributed zero content of original material for myself. Oh, but you have facial hair in the video right now. Do pe- are, are people seeing this? Can you oh, believe Patreons. It? Patreons oh, see this. Patreons. Oh, he's lucky. These lucky patrons, oh my god, invest your money. Folks, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, get on this. And and Horror Corridor fans, uh, all three of you. Uh, no, I, I made number two, but because of the Blitz, uh, whatever. Get, get, get over here, freaking invest, because Brandon's looking sexy with the face hair. Dave, look at you with your hair down. Christian, looking... You know, where's Vince? <laughs> yeah. Down here. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Dude, it's great to have you. This is great, guys, because this was completely impromptu. Watson and I were just bullshitting on Facebook like half an hour ago. And you know what? This this is because of a, of a, of a joke. Because Brandon made a joke on the last show, and I improved on it. And he was talking about <laughs> – we were talking about pie wacket, right? And oh, uh, on the yes. show – he said cake masturbation, but I've been saying, oh, I stole it from him, and I've been calling it cake jerk it for the past You week. wrote that to me, and I <laughs> lost it in the privacy of my own bedroom. All the girls were like, yo, what are you laughing at? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Dave Zendano. <laughs> okay, quiet. Cake jerk it. Brandon's all bad. He's like, Mike, that was my joke. No, that's fine. If I can inspire new material, that's great. I improved it. Absolutely, man. I, I did. improved it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, love, this is... I love Dave. I created the 6.75. <laughs> I improved on the pie whack <laughs> joke. Yeah. Hey, Brandon, I know you feel down about your solo cast, but let me tell you this. You didn't finish number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember that? <laughs> that was the best of them all. I was ready to that kill myself amazing. that was amazing. Hey, <laughs> Your solo cast, like I said last time I was here on episode 36, a year ago. Oh, my God. I'm wow. surprised I haven't committed suicide since then. Right, Brandon? And so, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's getting dark. It's getting dark. It's getting wow. evil dead on this. Indeed, evil dead. Now you're talking the, the fucking Segway master over here. Brandon's a little worried. Here. Brandon, really, this is not an audition for your job. <laughs> no, no, you're okay. Watson. No, no, I'm already good. <laughs> yeah. far too busy we've already discussed it you know no i've already quit podcasting jp in fact uh who doesn't listen to either of our shows because he's busy like cake jerking it he uh <laughs> adam he's green. like yeah yeah with adam green and joe and joe joe green he's like <laughs> he's like clickety clackety clickety clackety he's like i don't even know where that came from he's like oh, awesome. uh, yeah J- jp's just like watson if you don't do a show more than once a month if Horror Corridor doesn't come out more than once a month, you're retired. And I was just like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah. You can swear on the show. Okay. No, no, I know. I just, that's what I said to him. It was like, Shh, yeah, I guess you're right. I already said fuck on the show. Two, yeah. That's two F bombs you got from Watson. No one else has an F bomb Watson thing, except for the Eminem thing I posted earlier. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Folk, Love bluegrass, it. Eminem, kill you. Come to Horror Corridor page. Just see it. Don't bother with the show. Who cares about the show? I'm no, not no. promote it. For that. We got to promote it. Oh, yeah. for those of you out there, if you haven't listened to the Watts, Mr. Watson has a show called Horror Horror Corridor. You can catch up in all the episodes in like one day. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well check it out. <laughs> I have twelve episodes. Yeah. What what what's the thing I used to say back when I was like a good podcaster? I'd say like. Horror Corridor is a psychologically oriented, pseudo-academic, whiskey-soaked, except I don't drink whiskey anymore, solo cast where I wax intellectual about the blah, 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 blah. F- find me on Facebook. It's it's well-produced. It's good. I don't know. It sounds good to the ears. Put put on your headphones and, and listen to me try to be smart, sometimes succeed. You'll hear my son on there a couple times, like Frankie Z up in the house. You know, like, <laughs> Dave, our yeah. kids, our kids. Yeah. My man. Yeah. So, yeah, you, if, if, you know, if you're listening to the Exploding Heads, you know about Frankie Z. If you come to Horror Corridor, episodes 5 and 11, you'll hear my 14-year-old son do the Frankie Z treatment on movies. And I don't know. These kids are the future. Like, we got to have a show, Dave, where the two of us come on, bring the kids on, and we just shut up and drink. And uh, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't got much to offer. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible with God, Brandon. I'm glad, I, you know, and I hear you almost have as many listeners as you do episodes now, which is, which is fantastic. We're at, 12, we're at 12 now on the podcast page. Oh. This is great. Yeah. And I cool. hear they, they like to pie whack it when they listen to you. <laughs> they cake jerk it. Cake jerk it. Yeah. Brandon, did you watch it or no? I did watch it. Okay. 
What about the ending? Yes, no, or maybe so. This is what got me on the episode, by the way. Yeah, talk- this is what got me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you refresh my memory? What was the question about the ending? How do you feel? My, I was very disappointed by the third act. I thought that was... What? The third act was the weakest of all the acts. The buildup was great, <laughs> and then it was just a big letdown, a big steaming pile of poop. I, I'm shocked. This is just like they look like people, and you love they look like people. It's the same type of thing. I, I, I'll tell you right now, I gave this a six and a half out of ten. So it's a pie, pie crap it. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah no. more like a pie wagon, more like a pie crap it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all mine i just made that up so okay so i'm just curious i, I have been talking to people uh and everybody this is mr watson by the way uh, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i don't know You're, I, i've had too much water tonight uh no so some people are telling me that they detected nothing are we good with some minor spoilers about their yeah you know, let's minor racket? spoil for people. okay let's so some it. people are are of the opinion that there is nothing supernatural going on in this film concerning the ending, and they're doing this whole Brandon ending and Jerry Herring ending of they were crazy the whole time, which is bullshit. What if, like the like the author said, Pi Wackett is an indeed a manipulating spirit who drives the person under its influence to do a bad thing? So there's supernatural hands on this all along. I mean, did, did any of you see it like that? Because I sure did. 100% oh, shit. it was supernatural. 100%. She made the wrong choice. She fucked up, but they rushed it so quickly that who fucking oh. gives a shit? So, so your what? issue's pacing. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop. Christian, you didn't watch this yet, did you? No. So I'm oh, just... Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I tuned you all out. You could, can't you see it in my face? Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, <beautiful. laughs> you don't not listening. Vince, get up here and... <laughs> I didn't mean to do that to you. I, 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 you know how serious I am about spoilers. Oh, don't, Vince, no, I, Vince honestly... go rinse and, then jo- and then join us. Go rinse and then join us. <laughs> I, I honestly <laughs> wasn't listening. <laughs> I, I could do that. So the deal is there are some people, and, and Christian, it's up in the air, is there are some people saying there's nothing supernatural, and I'm of the opinion that there is because of, a, you know, the, the author who informs our main character of what's really going on with the history of Pi Wackett and whatnot, does say that it's a manipulating spirit if you want to go that route. I know some people who are like, no, but it's just all in the head. I don't think that myself. But some people say that about the witch, clickety-clackety, clickety-clackety. And I don't. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Yeah, no way. I don't know. Just, just thoughts. I mean, what do you think about that ending as far as the manipulation goes? Is it mind manipulation or outer forces manipulation? Because there seems to be in the threads I'm running into, people are arguing over this. I'm just like, yo, really, really, I do it. Twenty-two shots, thread. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like it's not horror. Please edit that out. I know that he's not gonna listen. That's That's true. true. (laughs) I won't get yelled at till ten months from now when he's up to this episode. (laughs) <laughs> Say what you want. He's telling David Christian, like, so remember when you guys had Brandon on the show before you replaced him with Watson? I got some beef with Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> jokes, jokes. I'm not a podcaster anymore. Oh, oh why not? Before. I'm about to venture over to YouTube, homies, with some high quality shit. Perfect. <gasps> what? Stuff, you, stuff you guys haven't seen in the community before. High quality stuff. Yeah, it's it's. A, remember in episode 11 of my show, my son and I teased. Uh, a surprise project we're doing well we're i'm announcing it here we're going to youtube in the summer with some high quality it's dark themed reviews slash vlogging with like just it's it's all about understanding the dark to understand yourself it's not necessarily a horror channel but it's all through my lens of life everything is horror to me including when i go shopping it's horror when i you know pick up my my son from his mom's it's horror although dave we oh, all yeah. know that is yeah uh, you know, when, when I do anything, it's yeah. horror. When I get a drink of water, it's horror. And I want to communicate this. Homies, let's understand the dark to understand ourselves. Inspirational film and arts reviews, high quality camera work and audio. It's going to be great. We just got to, we got to take time to launch. That's that's where it's heading. So when I made the joke about how I'm not a podcaster anymore, oh, content, you're still going to get it. Oh, yeah. Like crazy. New, new wave content. I do yeah. have a question for you. Oh, ask me. Jedi ghosts at the end of the ritual, <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> Okay, let me let me tell you about that. Um, I, I liked uh, them running, uh, him running away. And uh, what was what was it, Brandon? What was your defense against Christian's ending about uh, you didn't like him running away? <laughs> uh, there's so much journey left to do. <laughs> there is. He escapes and he doesn't go back to fight for the freedom of his friend's souls, who are now trapped will... in that haunted forest. Brandon, I will tell you what I like about your ending. It, is that... it would make it better. That's well, is that I, I did the same thing and. 
uh, to the strangers too, pray at night, where I had this whole script treatment that I wish they had asked me. Oh no, no, no spoilers, Dave. Uh, just I had a script. <laughs> 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 yeah, I had a script treatment that in my head that would have made it so much stronger and so much like oh, elevated the film so much. And I, I feel you when you want to put that piece of your you know of, of what of your thoughts onto the art. And so, yeah, it's it's all good, Dave. You're good. You're good, buddy. Thanks, homie. All right. No, no spoilers. Just I just okay. out of yeah, I did the same thing Brandon did with Pray at Night, where I I had this vision in my head of this is how it could be great, despite it being good. Jason Lloyd's gonna come behead me right now because he's like, Pray at Night's better than the first, and I'm gonna be like cake drinking it on his face. <laughs> just joking, Jason. I love you. Yeah, I love Jason so much. What am I doing? Woo! What the fuck Woo. are we doing? Yeah, what, I, I don't even know if the question was answered, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, 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 Jedi, Jedi ghost, Jedi ghost. <laughs> yeah. Hey, as long as as long as Hayden Christensen's there with his hand around your shoulder, Edward Cullen, we got this. <laughs> what? Ed, but the, Ed although, flashbacks with the Edward Cullen reference. You just look so. God, I want to be Bella right now. <laughs> <laughs> he is Twilight, isn't he? It's Twilight yeah, in this. Yeah, I used to get this all the time. <laughs> all the time. Come over here to Washington. That's where Forks is, homie. <laughs> it is. I've been there, and yikes. I got stories. Well, no stories. So it's – I'm sorry. <laughs> I I'm sorry. Nothing. I got nothing. Awesome. So are you staying for Evil Dead, or are you just – are you I in and out? for a little bit. I don't know. Kick me out whenever you want. I'll stay for, like, a, a little bit. And Take care. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <I'll see> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oh shit! No, he, he can You'll come back now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll, he's a perfect villain for Lauren. He'll just talk for the whole review, not let anyone else speak, and then give it an eleven out of ten. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Was I? Not, I'm just, oh, yeah. That was awesome. I'm sending oh, this right God. to her. Oh. oh, man, I'm crying tears of happiness right I'm now. just mad that I had finally met a nice Jewish girl, and then she ran off and married someone else. <laughs> immediately. Immediately. Imme- she didn't even have a boyfriend, but she got married immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you creep yeah, it out. happens. It's okay. Maybe next time, you know? Maybe next time. Marriages don't last. Don't worry about it, buddy. You know? You need to find a good French girl, Brandon. I know a little French. I'll teach you, personally. Personally. <laughs> That's right. very creepy. I'm such a fanboy. <laughs> oh, it's great. I this is a surprise. Yeah, I thought you guys be happy. It was to me too, man. It's so good. I'm no, loving it. I said it, it was I'm a loving... surprise. Oh, he said surprise. He said it was a good surprise. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, not a good surprise. Right right that a boom. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, brother. I've got all. I've got all these feelings of Lamont right now. I mean, lament. <laughs> <laughs> Lamont. <laughs> Lamont. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should regroup and get into the reviews. So let's do that quick. Flip a Rooney. Flip a Rooney. Hello, this is the Doom Show. Keep on keeping on and keep on trucking, America. We don't listen to our feedback because we don't get any. <laughs> <laughs> the truth hurts. I just alienated the two people that give us constant feedback. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that's gotta go. <laughs> that's gotta go in there. <laughs> so on the show, uh, we talk about giallo movies and slasher movies and cult movies sometimes we even talk about cameron mitchell and his movies i am richard who are you i am brad the guy that's not richard or jeffrey or simon that's right we have four people and we always talk at once except to each other jeffrey lives up north simon lives across the world richard lives in penis alabama Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Check out the other shows on legionpodcast.com. You can check out more Hello, This is the Doom Show at hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or at doommoviethon.com. Check for our Amazon exclusive Hello, This is the Doom Show cookbook. Do you like hot dogs? (laughs) We got them. Do you like mac and cheese? We got it. Do you like cheddar? We have it. Actually, we don't. No, no cheddar. Just Colby. Colby Jack. Hello, this is the Doom Show. We never gave up on you because you never gave up on us. Wow. Okay, so we're back. Evil Dead, the franchise, year of the franchise. Here we go again. This is one that we picked out ourselves. Well, mostly because it came in high on the vote when we did the vote on the page. So this is a, you know, this is a gift to you listeners because we love you and because... Maybe we love the series. We're going to find out. But uh, Maybe. 
Well, let's find out. Ooh. Tenth grade. Tenth grade. Sorry. Tenth <laughs> <laughs> grade. Whoa. Nom flashback. I was looking at my notes like an asshole. I was reading what my notes said. <laughs> and what and does the tenth grade have to do with it? Okay. Yeah. They're college okay. students. You want, okay, in 10th grade, I was in a class called uh, Mass Media and Visual Communications. I forgot which one it was, but they were taught by the same person because I wanted to go into filmmaking in college, like a lot of us. There was a situation where, you know, sometimes you would get a substitute that would be there for like a, a week or two because, yes. okay, I, th- I think maybe he had an operation, the teacher, or whatever it was. So now in, in, a, in a class like Visual Com or, or Mass Media, there is obviously, uh, this is the 80s, so there's a videotape machine, a VCR, and, and, and a TV. So we, we, we find out that we're going to have a teacher there, a sub, for two weeks. Did so you me, have washrooms? Yes, we have washrooms, restrooms. It's a test I have for this I gentleman. Know, I know. Cake jerkets. <laughs> yeah. I go to the States for this weekend, and where's the washroom? They're all looking at me like I got two fucking You didn't on. even record that part, so, yeah. so I look like an idiot anyway, yeah. but I wanted the laugh from you guys. <laughs> go ahead, Dave. That's what it's all about. Brandon Brand okay. was making fun of the fact that I use the term washroom instead of restroom, because you're fucking resting while you're taking a shit. You wash oh, your yeah. hands. I'm not resting in there. I agree. Restroom is stupid. Who the fuck's resting? Yeah. You're right. It is stupid. I mean, I guess it, it is kind of relaxing to take a good shit. Like, I, but I don't know. The restroom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry for hijacking and derailing. That's what we do. That's what we, I'm, not, I'm not touching that. Uh, so, 10th grade. <laughs> here, here we are. It's, it's 1987 or whatever the fuck it is for me. You know, and... Uh, I want to fuck off in class when there's a sub, like like most class clowns, assholes, you know. So I don't want to do anything serious. So I believe the teacher might have said something. Probably didn't want to do anything either. He's like, hey, if any, I think he must have said something. If anybody wants to bring in a movie to show to the class, be my guest. So right away, I'm Mr. Horror Guy, and I'm this and this. I decide I'm going to bring in fucking Evil Dead. <laughs> <laughs> no freaking way. Yeah. So we watched Evil Dead. Two or three days in a row in that fucking class in tenth grade, everybody saw girls, fucking everything, tree rape, the whole fucking. Nine you were you were Chainsaw head. and Dave before summer school. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, <laughs> that year came out, right? Yeah, eighty seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, Chainsaw back in the early days of message boards, like the early two thousands, that was my fucking. That was my handle, Chainsaw, because of that. Because yeah. That fuck that was me totally that's, man yeah that's awesome. so, so my tenth grade class all got to witness the evil a bunch of fucking fifteen year olds all of us in class watching the fucking the Evil Dead I was like yeah no so. way wow that would yeah, have made man. the news today if that I know right? today that's oh, ab- on the news <laughs> absolutely no, I was gonna say there was a woman who was uh, arrested for showing the ABCs of, uh, of- hidden horror. No. <laughs> that's what I'm you. What's the the movie version, not the bad show version? Oh. ABC's of death. ABC's of death, right? ABC's of death. She showed it to like I I think a bunch of elementary school kids. Well, that's and just she stupid. It, she, that's just dumb. She thought it was an educational thing, but she got fired. Yeah, man. Dave, that's badass, man. Good times, good times. You know, <laughs> to my tenth tree grade. rape at all. What was the general consensus amongst your fellow classmates? I don't remember anybody giving me a hard time about it. I don't remember girls giving me dirty looks or any of that shit. So it, it kind of went over okay. You know, I don't remember anybody bitching. So That's awesome. Maybe yeah. a lot of those girls got into gardening and <laughs> I, uh, uh, bad joke. I'm sorry. Or maybe they're totally <laughs> afraid of gardening. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. All right. Brandon's cringing. He's like, whoa, bad jokes on this podcast. Ow. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, B. B is dying to read the synopsis, I think. Is that what it is? Go. Synopsis up. All right. <laughs> Evil Dead. The Evil Dead, 1981. Written and directed by Sam Raimi. Five friends travel to a cabin in the woods where they unknowingly release flesh-possessing demons. Unknowingly or annoyingly? <laughs> <laughs> Is that supposed to be a jab at the way I said the word? Because yeah. I said it absolutely correctly. I said unknowingly, which is the way it is. Annoyingly, yeah. <laughs> Why are they annoyed by doing it? I don't know. Maybe because there was no TV there and they couldn't watch the Hyper Bowl. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> nice. Nice. A stretch. Just, a stretch just, for that one. I had to stretch for that one. <laughs> yeah, I got to go to the washroom. Yeah, I got to go to the washroom. Excuse me. Yeah. Now, this this film is the epidome of independent horror. Oh, my am, God. Am I, not, am I not right in saying that? Like, Hi, Jerry. When you think of independent <laughs> horror, this epidome's it. There's so much to talk about. I'll tell you something right now. I watched 
obviously for the show. I watched one, two, three, the re- part of my Army of Darkness and the remake. And then after I did those four, I went back to watch Evil Dead again. And because I did that, I mean, when you get to the end, you hear my rating. It's probably not going to be a surprise. It's a classic movie. But when I did that, something about going through one and the other ones and then going back to part one at the end of it, the last viewing <laughs> blew me away more than it has in years because of how much of a horror film it is. Exactly. Everything- exactly. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Upon watching, I'll just say it right now, upon watching one of the films of these four, it changed my grade to one of the others that I wasn't as high on because I realized how much better a film it is compared to this particular one. I'll leave it at that. Okay, and guys, I I agree. I'm You know I'm a fan, but... Upon this watch, I'm shocked that people don't see the comedy in this one. Yes! <laughs> because yes! it's there, and it's slapsticky, really? and everybody says, oh, it's such a departure in part two. Of course, nope. two ups it, and there's way more Stooges routines that then escalates even into more so uh, in Army, which we'll get to. I always do this. But it's there. <laughs> it's rooted right in the evil dead. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to talk me into that because I don't I'm not buying what you're selling right now. Dude, everything about Evil Dead, there's everything that's wrong with Evil Dead is what makes it funny because there are so many mistakes with continuity, with this, with that. It's low budget filmmaking. The it's acting is so bad, it's laughable. I no, disagree. These are, these, these, what? I Bruce disagree. Camp, with... Bruce Campbell was the worst part of the Evil Dead in the, the first one. In the original I like Scott. <laughs> Scott was yeah, the best Scott's part. In fact, I, I'm like, oh my god, maybe I don't remember Evil Dead. Maybe it's Scott versus Evil Dead. I, it's <laughs> oh funny, Brandon. That's <laughs> actually what gives it its charm. I actually exactly. have no problem with exactly. that. Exactly. Like, I'm not. I'm not complaining about it. But that's also what gives it its comedy. It's like one moment. Oh, there's mud on his face. There's mud on his nose. Then it's gone. Then it's there. Then no, it's but there. that's that's the comedy. Then, he, that, it, then that's he's no covered different. in blood. He's not covered in blood. He's it's a Looney Tune. It's yeah. it's a it's a it's a horror movie Looney Tune right from the start. I was going to say get go. How about this one? They open oh. the cabin with the keys. They go inside. They lock the cabin. A few key- scenes later, outside, the keys are on top of the cabin. Look. Yeah. Okay. Did fall out the window? Put it back up there? Wait a minute. So you're taking guerrilla filmmaking and you're turning the mistakes they made into comedy? That's the comedy you're referring to? Because it's- It makes it comical. That's not what I'm referring to. That's what Brandon's referring to. I'm actually saying that there is... All, everybody says this is straight pure horror. And I think it is. See, I no. don't. No, I don't. I, and and it's you. not coming out of it's not coming out of the continuity and the amateurs uh, 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 factor to it because that that I guess adds to my uh, love for it because that's kind of like what it's all about. We're we were talking just in the break there. Watson was talking about wanting you know about filmmaking and whatnot, and that's what they were doing. They just decided we made a short movie within the woods. We want to make a feature length one. Let's just go do it. And I love that energy, and it's in the movie. Lightning in the bottle, Dave, as you mentioned with a few other movies, they just sort of caught this kinetic sure. energy. Uh, obviously, Sam Raimi has talent, but. They, they captured this energy there with all of the low-budget quirkiness. They added his own style. But with that, he has these moments of Stooges routines that are underlining. They're there. It's all there. I don't see that at all. Nothing Stoogy. What's so funny? I'm, I'm with Dave on this, you guys. I, you. I, wow. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm actually – I, I want to hear what you guys – I want to hear more about what you guys are saying because I'm with Dave on here that – even on, you know, I obviously wasn't like preparing for this show itself, but I don't know if anyone knows this and what sort of helped with the appearance here is that this is my favorite franchise. And so I'm four for four on this, baby. So that's what's up. But I, I guess, uh, yeah, uh, Brandon, see, like, I, I want to hear about this comedy aspect because uh, I guess I'm with Dave that it's just I, I take it as a totally serious. Uh, and I get what you're saying. There are I think there might be a disconnect when you consider, OK, this is made back when it was. What, 80, 81? I can see the, the disconnect from the era. It's the same way you can look at, like, you know, one of those movies and be like, ah, oh, they have a funny hairstyle, LOL. <laughs> but, you know, but other than that, I don't know. I guess I guess, I guess, guess just take it pretty seriously like it's a, like one of Christian's nasty videos. I don't know. Or video <laughs> nasty, uh, you know? I I would actually say the remake is the most straight-laced of the horror, of oh, horror yes. bar yeah. none. This one, okay. I, I guess I'll, I'll have to... I, I'm trying to articulate this in the way that saying that the the quirkiness of the total excessiveness of what's happening on oh. screen is what makes it like a live action Looney Tune in a sense. Yes. 
Yes. So it's like it's like laughing at the just the the pure over the top nature of the things that are going on on screen rather than deliberate say jokes and waka waka. You think? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there isn't okay, the waka okay. waka nature that there is in part two. Uh, yeah. Okay. But. Oh. But but it's there. But it just there's a, just an underlining tone that's there, and some of it comes out with the the sheer craziness of the continuity of him being totally covered in in black, <laughs> viscous, bloody fluids, and then pretty much toweling himself off, and he's totally clean. But some of that is there. But that's kind of from a, the universe of a Looney Tune. Of, See, I, I'm with you on yeah, this. That's low budget. I I think some of the scenes in the ba- obviously the pipes in the basement that's very comical. Linda's makeup. Yeah. Linda's demon makeup, like I wish I I found it's hilarious. She's she's like a clown. She's just giggling. It's you're laughing. Scott's really? makeup is probably the most funny because to me, they gave him a puppy dog nose. <laughs> Look at Scott the next time you watch it when he Dave's turns, he's got a black right now. He's got a black puppy dog nose. It's great. But, I love this movie. I'm not yeah. shitting on it. I, I, think, yeah, I know you're, you're not all, shitting on it. You're mistaken. I think yeah, a same comedy for that we hate the movie. I love it. I'm all just these saying, things make it so good. Yeah. Even Bruce Campbell, because he's not yet he's not yet Ash. And anybody who watches Ash vs. Evil Dead knows that this character has grown. And Ash vs. Evil Dead is the best version of Ash Williams. By far. Oh, for Christ's sake. By far. I Listen. I will well, we know how Dave we know what Dave's gonna go with the series. I already That's know how he's gonna go. Yeah, I know he's gonna go, but we but we always talk about having to hold up the old films and scrutinize them and judge them the way we do the, the new films. It doesn't mean we have to lower our grades for them, but we have to at least point out the fact that they have just as many mistakes as independent films today do. Yeah, but, okay, look at it this way. Uh, how can I? Uh, let me try to find something different. I'm sorry, Dave. I, no, no, no. I, I feel I just, like Christian and I really upset you. <laughs> no, I'm not upset. I'm just try- I think that you guys are making making something out of it because of the movies that followed. Because of the tones that the other movies took, I think when you look back on part one and you see the, uh, Bruce Campbell, you're seeing something in him that really isn't there because you're thinking about the Ash Williams of, well, of yeah, future he, films. He hasn't stepped up yet. He's, he's basically a coward in he's, Evil Dead. He's serious, though. There's not no comedy in that. He's Everything about this movie, and I, I, like I said, I noticed it more so because I watched four in a row and then went back two nights ago and watched part one again, and I marveled at how horrific it was and how there was nothing about it that I could laugh at. It was just like one of the most horrific films I've seen. Like to me, it was so straight horror the way it was presented, how when you see POV from the evil dead outside, like looming all the time and and the, and the great soundtrack, which I'll tell you what, this soundtrack completely blew me away this time because I, I was watching this in, in my, uh, on the map with the beats in, in my ears mm-hmm. and really picking up on the nice. sound design and, and, and really hearing, you know, sponsored by beats <laughs> and, and hearing the soundtrack beats by Dave. and how horrific it is and how old school it is. And just everything about it was just said horror to me. Like, look at it this way. Uh, this might not be the best example, but look at a movie like the beyond. Okay. For 1981. Let's say the Beyond what is what it is. I think it's kind of similar in tone to like the Evil Dead, where it's a straightforward horror film. But there are a few goofy things in the Beyond because of the time it was, and maybe because of the budget or whatever. A little couple, some quirky things. But I don't see that as as comedy. And like, how many low budget films do we watch? Friday the Thirteenth, Take a Drink, nineteen eighty, low budget guerrilla filmmaking, same shit. Maybe there's a few things you can laugh about, like uh, the fake lightning scene with Kevin Bacon and, and one or two things that are a little goofy, but I don't think I would laugh at it. Like you, you guys know, are I was giggling. I, th- I thought it was funny and charming how silly it was, like the moon. Like, did you, like what did they do? Like put a projector up that. in the corner? I, I mean, it, but it was like That's I horrible. smiled. I laughed. It didn't, really? it didn't, it didn't invoke fear. I am and my, no? co- my oh, huh. sense of comedy is not where Brandon's going. I understand where Brandon's coming from as well, but I'm not like, okay, we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We've talked about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That to me is straight horror. Evil yes. Dead, because of the excessiveness, because of its sheer giddiness to entertain, just becomes such a fun roller coaster ride that is just there to please you. And I, I'm appreciative of the fact that it wants to please me and I'm accepting of it. It's just not a scary movie to me. I pity, I pity you guys. I pity you. I pity the fool. I pity the fool. And I, I say that with, with Thanks, love. Thanks, Mr. T. Like, 
<laughs> I say that with nothing but love because of the experience I just had watching it this last time and singing to myself as I'm watching it. Holy fuck. <laughs> Here it is. The, here's the joke again. But now that's horror. That's how I felt watching it. Everything about the way it was presented, uh, obviously the, the crazy third act and the gore and the, the horrific things that happened in possession. I mean, the only thing I could see being a little goofy is like when he's smacking the fucking the girl who's laughing at him, uh, you know, <laughs> around because yeah, awesome. of the way he swings and the way she moves. But I don't think it was played to be silly. I think because of what came after and you look back on it now, you see shades of, of Sam Raimi and, and Bruce Campbell. Possibly. And you, you make it a little more uh, as to what it was initially presented as. That's how I see where your guy, where you guys are coming from. I just, I see straight horror in, in every sense and like, like serious horror. That's what, that's why I'm just so surprised. And it's like, I feel bad that you guys, nothing wrong with a fun movie. Like Evil Dead 2, fun movie, great. But I mean, I, I, I don't know. I see, the, about I, see the, I see the intent for pure horror, but there's too many things given the budget, given, you know, when this film was made, that it just still comes across as, as goofy sometimes, but in a great way. I know everyone's blowing it. Don't get me wrong. I, I just I just have a different take. I'll, I'll tell you what. I, so let's talk about Friday 2 for just a second. Do you guys like Friday 2? Any of you guys have ever heard of that franchise, Friday the 13th <laughs> 2? Take I'm a drink. I prefer seven. I prefer seven. So, okay. But hold on. Here, okay. How I see Evil Dead, number one. Uh, like It's like Friday 2 for me. I link those two films together because they both represent that specific point in these two infamous franchises where we get to see our favorite characters before they're iconic. It's like this little sweet spot in horror history that you can never get again. And for me, that's big. And like Jason with hockey mask is Ash with chainsaw hand, right? But this is before that. It's just something so, I guess, from the way I look at it, when I cast my mind back to what it would have been like to film a video, a video, a, you know, video nasty at that time, it's just like it, there's something so pure and just uh, gritty about it. And, uh, you know, hey, you know, talking about them gritty, nasty videos, just like we were talking about in the uh, in, on a little break. You know, if I learned anything from Christian's recent appearance on the Who Will Survive podcast, check it out, everybody. He loves them nasty vids. And, man, I'm uh, I don't know. That's I guess that's just how I see this one. It's kind of like the Friday two of the series for me, even though it's the first of the franchise. Does that make any sense to, to, to really, you guys? I'm really kind of pissed off at how yeah. good of an of a comparison that is. I think we should say goodbye to him right now. <laughs> no, but that was but, no, that was really good actually. I it's, knew I brought him here for a reason, besides the punk YouTube. <laughs> well, it's the character before the icon. It's the character before the icon. You could have said it simply yes. with that. <laughs> you didn't have to Watson it up. Yeah. I'm so totally kidding, man. That was awesome. But <laughs> But that's true, but I'm not I'm not taking anything away from that. Because actually well, Ash is just know. another one of the characters until a third of, uh, or two thirds into the movie, almost. Let me try to bring this all back down to street level, which seems to be my new favorite term. Nice, Timmy. One, all right. That whole scene where they're pretending to read the cards, and then all of a sudden she starts rhyming off the the, the numbers of uh, the cards. Two of spades, Jack of diamonds, yeah. Jack of spades. Ah! Freaky as hell, <laughs> and she's ah! and th that part is freaky. The part yes. where the the pencil gets stabbed into her awesome. into her foot. I remember that as a kid, and a kid being more like a teenager. <laughs> Possession by pencil. And that stuck That <laughs> stuck pencil. with me and freaked me out as well, especially when it started spiraling out with the with Yeah, the vein, did you that, know a number two veins? pencil could turn you into a clown demon? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> but tell me, tell I'm me just it's not. devil's advocate here. It is funny. But it's also <laughs> creepy when she's sitting there giggling and, and going, we're going to get you. Yes, creepy. It's creepy, but it's also funny. I don't yeah, know how exactly. to explain it. Exactly. So you, guys, you, know what? You, you guys, you know what? Uh, I, I think I can speak to your point a bit. So uh, last year, I took my son to see the Evil Dead musical. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was on stage. We got to see the play. It was a lot of fun. And... What's, what was crazy about that was I had to school him quickly on Evil Dead like that day. I was surprised. I didn't know it was in town. So I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, I got tickets. It's tonight. We're going to try to get in what little Evil Dead we can. 
uh, I'm going to show him number two in Army of Darkness because I know that's what the play, is, you know, that's, you know, what it's mostly based on. Yeah. Well, we he had not seen number one. So only after we watched number two, then Army of Darkness, then the remake, did I go back to number one to show Lil Watt number one. And he was laughing at parts. And it occurred to me that I wonder if I had shown him the films, you know, and this is a kid who has no nostalgia for this series. He doesn't know anything about his history, nothing about Ash. And because I buy, I love Ash. I buy that character, hook, line, and sinker all the way through. But from somebody from a 14, or he was 13 at the time, or maybe he was still 12, about to turn 13, he doesn't know anything about that psychologically. So it doesn't enter into his, you know, his biases or anything. So I wonder if I had shown him Evil Dead 1 first, if it would have gotten a laugh from him at all instead of showing it to him last where it did get the last based on what he knew of ash i think that's something that dave's trying to say but i think it also speaks to what you and christian are uh you know brandon what you know you two are trying to say about the fact that you know there, there are some some moments that can be considered to be you know some funny moments and my son clearly showed me that from his clean perspective of the films i don't know does, does any of that make sense it makes total Kinda, sense your son yeah. is a fucking genius he, yeah, he <laughs> no, actually but, is. I hate it. It, it does Better make sense. Better looking than I am. He's smarter. We smarter. all have the nostalgia of that. Sorry for cutting you off, Mr. Watson. I no, apologize. no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm bitching. I'm not being very polite to our guest, but shut up oh, for God, a fucking second you. so I can finish with myself. Oh. Uh, Come here. Just Come here. Kiss me. So <laughs> I think that's exactly it. Like, I have the nostalgia factor here. And remember playing as a quote-unquote straight horror film. And, but going back to it, I'm like, no, there's the com comedy is there from the beginning, just not quite as overt and in your face as we get later down the road. But right. Christian, do you it's think if I'd shown my son that movie first before two and army of darkness that he would have seen much funny in it? Do you think from somebody who's like from that clean perspective? I think that's where Dave's coming from, where, you know, he, he I think he sees it even better than I do from that clean standpoint of this is back. I'm in the mindset of back when I saw this film back in the day. Like, well, I, I know I'm know? only going to argue my point to, to make yeah, my no, point stronger it, and say, of course, he's yeah. going to laugh at it. But who knows? Because David say no. I watched Perfect. it with two people who had never seen it before and they were laughing Interesting. At, okay. so, at, at a lot of parts. But also, and I, I mean, I'm kind of a dick for doing this. At one point I said, here comes the tree rape. And like my friend laughed at me because he, he had no idea the tone <laughs> shift was about to go. Oh, fuck. He was like, oh, shit, you weren't kidding. He had no idea. So and let's talk was, about that. There's moments of genuine terror, but I still see the comedy in it. Tree rape. It's terrifying. Yet it's, it's hilarious. Tree rape. I mean, it, it's conflicted. It's absolutely terrifying. And the way it's done is not really funny. But then you say the term tree rape and you're like, holy crap. There's a bit of, unfortunately, kind of a funny undertone. She, and and I, Cheryl I the... gave birth to a bonsai at the end of the film. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a baby tree joke. A baby tree joke. Listen, waka waka. I'm we haven't even talked about the things. film. Really. We're done in a minute. i got to say three things. Here, I'll put this on out here right now. The ritual. What if a tree would have fucking raped somebody in the ritual? You would have found no humor in that. And that, the tone of that film... It's that would have been movie. anal, so that might have been a bit... It, I, that would have been horrible, and you would have not laughed, right? <laughs> but still, come on. He doesn't like, do anal, yeah, yeah, I Picture the thing, unless it's bleaching. You know, picture the <laughs> thing. <laughs> the shit that happens in Evil Dead, picture that happening in the ritual is a serious horror film, and I don't think you'll find anything funny about it. That's all I'm saying. I think you're, you're taking the tone of the other films and putting it on that. That's number one. Number two, my daughter, Frankie Z, watched Evil Dead 1. I, I saw, we showed, I watched her part one. I showed her part one. And a week later, I showed her part two. You know, she didn't laugh at either one of them. But whatever. Maybe it's just not her humor. But there was, there was no humor to be had from her whatsoever. She she enjoyed them. She just watched them. And they, they were like, yeah, sure, they, they were good. You know, she didn't understand why it was called The Evil Dead. That was her biggest complaint. She, when, when, she, when I put her in a movie called The Evil Dead... She was expecting it to be like zombies or something because I don't know. She was, why is it called the Evil Dead though? I didn't see the dead. Anyway, that was that was her only question about it. And she could probably again, be a marketing guy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Number three, the the old joke that I said a long time ago, and I, it was for these two movies. I watched Texas Chainsaw two before part one, and I watched Evil Dead two before part one. And in both cases, when I went back after and then watched the original, I said, "Now that's horror." 
and that's it. That's how it started. So I had the exact same reaction when I saw I Evil Dead 2 first and loved it. <laughs> and then I went back and watched Evil Dead 1. I was like, now we're talking. So even at that age, you know, seeing it the first time then, already knowing that it transitioned into more comedy stuff, going back and seeing the first one, I was like, okay, that's fucking horror movie. I still feel so, like the more you watch part one, the more you start to laugh at things. Like when the, the possession takes place and, and you know, amazing, um, and she says, why did you wake us? Dude, yeah. Why did you okay. wake us? Okay, they were fucking with them on the bridge at the very beginning of the film before they even got to the cabin. No, you're blaming the bridge for that? No, the de- yeah, that was the demon cam. They fucked with them on the bridge before they oh, even dude. got there and uh, listened to the recorder. Absolutely, no, 100%. 100%. You're talking about the friggin' uh, when the, the tire demon, goes in the, the bridge? The demon cam leading up, and it bumps the car, and then the car dips into the bridge. Absolutely, but but I, I'm not. I don't want to. I can't argue that. I, I, I don't. I still love it. It's 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 perfect in its imperfections. If you look at Sam Raimi's works as a whole, as a whole, Brandon, don't get excited. But hey, <laughs> I'll swallow you whole. <laughs> <laughs> I'll swallow you whole. I'll swallow you whole. I don't think that's what they're saying, but that's okay. What? <laughs> Isn't it I'll swallow your soul? Of course. It my feet just went down since it's not I'll swallow you whole. I, know, I think I know it's yes. I fucking you. swear I thought you thought it was a swallow you whole. <laughs> no, I just, you, you brought it up so it was a perfect opportunity to make the joke now. So I, now I've lost what you thought. You're talking about Raimi where he transitioned. So yeah, you look at your his whole body of work and right after this he did Crime Wave and then moved to Evil Dead 2. He had that cartoon sort of mentality with them and that cartoon mentality is here i'm not saying it's wrong uh, and and obviously we're it looks like we're two and two here you guys are seeing straight horror i'm seeing a playful goofiness right from the uh, like on the onset of of the series nothing even wrong the with opening. that i love it even the opening of the film immediately into horror the movie starts evil dead boom right into the fucking <laughs> you know what i mean no, no, <laughs> no, I, I hear right you. Away. I hear you, but I w- couldn't wait to share it. And I thought maybe we'd all be experiencing this. Obviously, Brandon and I are the only ones that have. And well, you, know friends. you know what's great about this, Christian, is that we're all standing around the phenomenon that is this movie, liking it for these different reasons and coming at it from these different angles, but all with the sincere appreciation, it feels like. And that, that's fantastic. I think that's why we podcast. You know, we, we look at the piece of art that stands, this little phenomenon that, of, of art that stands in the center of all of us. We all look at it. We stand in a circle around it and look at it. And we all analyze it from our own unique perspectives. And I just think it's really cool that, you know, the four of us are kind of split while still liking it. I, I think that's neat. That, wow. That, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, well, Sam Raimi was my favorite director with John Carpenter for a long time. Sam Raimi for the sheer like craziness of how he achieved some of his shots and what the way what he, he fills your holes and the way he fills my holes. Like Swallowed I you. remember reading Fangoria and saying that finding out that they did those the ominous shots that uh, are the evil sort of approaching with the camera on a two by four, mounted on a two by four, and pretty much running through the woods. And I just thought that was so awesome. That like that's it just that's what makes you want to make movies. You just are like cool. That yeah. it was like a love for the craft and trying. Like he was actually trying to learn. We're talking about filmmaking without going to film school by just making a movie. And when you see what he yeah. does with Evil Dead and then what he did in Crime Wave, which a lot of people haven't seen, and it's actually an underrated comedy. And then how much he sort of evolved when it comes to Evil Dead Two. He he's a master of the craft. I think the horror stories behind the making of this, you know, them having to sleep in the cabin and burning furniture to stay warm and all that, you know, even even Raimi got sick and, and passed out while while directing. That makes me appreciate it even more the love that went into it, even though it was horrific. And they filmed it on the weekends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and it took years to do. And it's like you said about different hairstyles and different and editing, you know, full pause and things like that. I mean. That's that's guerrilla filmmaking. That's what they were doing. So when we initially started and right off the bat, you know, you were laughing about, you know, Ash and what was on his face one second and, and not the next second and things like that. You finding comedy in that. I was like, I was a little defensive because I was I was thinking of that saying, well, we've seen that in plenty of other films that are low budget and no one ever mentioned that being comical. 
You know, they said, oh, yeah, that, that, you know, you know what I mean? But, I mean, that that's neither here nor there now. We're, we're past that part of the conversation. I just, I've seen this film so many times. I mean, uh, 50 plus, so many fucking times. It's a movie I can put in any time. It's just, you know, it, it's a comfort film. I could sit there and put it on and have a conversation with somebody or clean, clean the house and have it on in the back. It's just one of those films I've seen so many times. So when I watched it the first time, it was just, I was here watching, and I'm like, okay, The Evil Dead. I love The Evil Dead, but it's also a movie that, you really appreciate it when you're definitely in the mood for it. When you want to sit down and get into the film, there's another level level of appreciation. And when I watched it the first time for this retro, I didn't necessarily have that mind state. But when I watched it the second time after going through the franchise, it really took me in. And because it hit me so strong from the horror element of it, I was like, wow, I was really wowed by it. And I couldn't wait to get on and say, how much horror I thought it was and how it blew me away and how it's a horror classic. And you, you guys began with Shit that. On and then I got defensive about it. But it's like Watson said. It's it's a genuine love anyway. Nobody's shitting on it, thank goodness. No one, how about, you know how I mean? about the just... Raimi Craven back and forth jazz? Oh, isn't that it? Great? Yes. That's, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Should we it is cool. Started in, uh, started in Hills Have Eyes because... Jaws, Hills right? Ha- because of the Jaws. Yeah. That he did the Hills Have Eyes here. Then, yeah. then Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Had uh, the, cl- the clip of Evil Dead in it, yeah. Yeah, Nancy falling asleep to Evil Dead. <laughs> she couldn't but she awake. wasn't falling asleep to it. It was the other, it, it was, uh, I don't think she was falling asleep to it, was she? She, was. I, I think uh, it was on the TV. She was trying to stay awake with the coffee. Yeah, and she, just she, a little yeah. jab, like like Evil Dead is going to put her to sleep. <laughs> I, I guess I guess that's possible what he was doing. Now, did you see the other one in, in Evil Dead too? when we get there? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, did you? Okay, because I didn't notice it until I heard it on a, on another podcast uh, over the past year, and then I was looking for it and I saw it. Oh, is that when Freddie pops out of the fruit cellar? <laughs> Freddie's glove. Yeah, yeah. Freddie's glove is up on top of the. Yeah. Oh fuck! I didn't door. even know. I know it's it's not as noticeable, and someone told me about it, so I was looking for it this time, and. And that's the nod back, and then the final nod was uh, in Scream, which yep. is uh, which I totally. I, I can't. I don't remember shit. How am I gonna remember that? I remember no, he no. gives the choices. Yeah, you, know, you want to watch Evil Dead or Halloween? Halloween. Well, actually, no, the final nod. The final nod was in Spider Man Three when Bruce Campbell was in Spider Man Three. <laughs> that's, that's great, man. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, he was, but. And the final, final nod is that in uh, season four of Asher's is Evil Dead, Wes Craven four. comes back as a fucking deadite. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Oh, the the fucking Woodsboro brothers are gonna have your head. Hey, Holy he's coming shit. back. He's gonna direct more Shocker Two. Is his first movie on. The yeah, he's gonna side. come back. He's gonna, at the end of the ritual. He's gonna be floating with the other Jedi. Yeah. Oh my yes. god. Him. It'll be Wes Craven. <laughs> Romero and Hooper. <laughs> yeah, there they are. Fucking <laughs> Star Wars. Fuck that. This is actually the Sarlacc Digest. <laughs> Oh, Brian keeps thinking we haven't talked about the movie. I feel like we have been talking about the movie. It's a movie that takes that cabin in the woods team and runs with it, and they throw everything at you. They The stop motion effects, like I said, chintzy oh. and crazy and low budget, but that's what makes it great. The stop motion effects in, in part one are amazing. I love it. I love the sound design in the film. I, lo- I love everything about the film. I even wrote here that the continuity issues add to the charm of the film – and the overabundance of blood mixed with Ash's reactions add to that hint of comedy. I that's the, my exact note that I wrote. So that's where I find the comedy in. That's fair. Yeah. The tone of the film was too horror for me to to, to go there. I guess. I like the it's I like the connection to the characters. I thought even though I'm telling you, I thought the acting was poor, but obviously it should be there. This is like, yeah. but it doesn't matter. But I I genuinely believe that these are friends. This is Ash's sister. This is their girlfriend. They have that sentimental moment with the magnifying glass. It's nice. I don't know why it's a magnifying glass. <laughs> I know they were originally going to use that to, with the sun to burn the book, but they didn't do that, so they should have just changed it to a necklace or something. But holy shit! Right. Maybe I just found another one. Because in Shocker, doesn't he give her? Doesn't he give? And I'm being serious. Doesn't the boyfriend give his girlfriend that stupid necklace? And it looks almost identical. to... I got to go back to see Shocker now. Wait, That'll be serious? a cliffhanger. I used to love that movie as a guilty pleasure as a kid, and I, that's a guilty pleasure movie because that movie's stupid. <laughs> Shocker's a stupid movie. Sorry, Woods yeah. World Brothers, but it's a dumbass movie. But he gives her that necklace that he ends up having to throw it in. And actually, funny enough, Sam Raimi's brother is in that movie and has to okay. go fish it out of the water. Ted's in, Ted's in that. Oh, my God. Look at this. Dude. Yeah. 
The shocker. <laughs> you just gave the audience a shocker right now. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I did it right. <laughs> oh, that was fine. There it is. Oh, that was fine. <laughs> it's Listen, two in the stink. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Where do you want the two? <laughs> you freak. Oh, shit. I just want to highlight a couple quick things, and then I'll stop talking about the movie. But the things I love about it, uh, the, the scary when that clock stops, that's always fucked with me. I've always thought that was scary. And this is the joke going back to the banana laser days that I I, I mentioned it there. I, I forgot why it came up, but when I was a kid, you guys ever see Davy and Goliath that oh, yeah. that, that show? Oh, yeah. Hey Davy. Yes, Stop. there was an episode of Davy and Goliath. In that episode, Davy got mad, or so, I forgot what it was, but he said something to his family like, I, "I wish everybody was gone" or something like that. And his father kind of gave him a speech and said, "Hey." If you had that, you would be alone. You wouldn't have anything. And he, he said, think about it, Davey. Think about it. It was a real serious thing. So Davey goes to bed, and then he has a dream. But we don't know what the dream when you're watching it. You're a kid. And he wakes up, and all of a sudden the clock stops. He has a clock just like that. And it's, it's going back and forth, and all of a sudden it stops. And it's just fucking scary. And you hear uh, the echo of his father's voice saying, think, think about, about it. it. Think, think about, about it. it. It's, and it scared the fuck out of me when I was a kid. It's a Christian I show. Forward. Because you were Davey. Yeah. That's right. I am Davey. Oh, right? <laughs> Dave Z. Oh, Think about Think it, about Dave, it Z. Dave Z. <laughs> Think about it, Dave Z. <laughs> we're going to get you. Oh, shit. Yo, that scared me, though. I I, I bought it on, on Prime. You can buy episodes of Davey and Goliath. It's called, and the episode <laughs> itself is called The Stop Clock. I had to show my daughter because it scared me. I said, I want you to see this, man. And, tell, and I told her that it scared me. And having that thought in my head, when that clock stops, that's always fucking scared me. Uh, I think that's scary. I think when the girl does up and you have a wig and orange and slumber and it's <laughs> spooky because she's floating and it looks really good. And yet you can't even see her mouth moving. And that is what adds to the creepiness of it. It's not even coming from her. It's coming from, you know, but okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but just, saying the words you've awakened me from my ancient slumber is pretty funny too. You think so? I do. You have awakened me from my ancient slumber. That's like old school. That's like Lovecraft. That's like something you would have seen written in, like, you know, old text. Doesn't even hammer hungry. Hammer I will swallow you whole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's just a lot of scary things in it. And like I said, the third act is just fucking. I'm, I love the mirror gag. I think it's better in this one than it is in the next one because you don't see it coming when, when it's the waters. That's fucking creepy. Man. I love that. And I've heard people say the opposite but i feel the same way oh. as you did, that i prefer the water to the uh to, what to the gravity too yeah. yeah i think it's better uh, yeah, i, I, I do so. think it's better i and, you know yes there are funny moments unintentional but it's it i don't know it's kind of fucked up what happened to her eyes and they're bugging out and just the way she's acting and i just i think that the teasing and tormenting is, is fucking scary i i think it's great yeah. and i think it's scary towards the end when he's getting those flashback voices, uh-huh. you know, when Ash is the only one left and he's getting hearing the voices, the things that happen and shit like that, and everything that goes on with Scott and how bad he gets and when he's dying and he's giving him the water and all that, just and every time they turn, how fucking scary it is. I don't know. It just blows Scott, me away. That Scott way. turned into a very scary puppy dog. <laughs> he, I'm telling you, you gotta look. He's got a puppy dog nose. So Snapchat, Snapchat filters that the girls have. The... That's exactly what it looks like. Oh, my God. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a little black nose, and it's cold oh. to the touch. It's cold to the touch. <laughs> they are Snapchats. You're right. I, can... I, my wife I, loves I, them I think with, with the Evil Dead <laughs> franchise as a whole, you have to kind of – I'm not going to say check your brain at the door, but turn it down a little because if you're trying to at least connect things, especially the fact that they're all made by different studios, so there's – sort of three different beginnings but there's also the issue of how does one become possessed which is an absolute mess in the whole franchise but it doesn't matter no, it doesn't because... matter once you read the fucking once you read the words all bets are off it doesn't matter evil comes in crashes in and that's it and they do all kinds of fucked up shit or a pencil <laughs> can turn you or being scratched a bit can turn you except if you're ash when you're being torn to shreds it won't turn you yeah, being, but... thrown against, being thrown against a wall in part two can turn you, you know, it's just, there's just no connection, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. There's demons and they can go in anybody they want to go in. There, there's, they have been awakened from their ancient slumber. There you go. <laughs> they, don't wanna, they don't want to penetrate Ash. And I did... <laughs> they do what they want. They can do in what part, they want. In they're part one, they don't want to penetrate Ash. They're not of this world. They can come out and, and fuck with you as much as they want. They can do, how about when that chick bites her own hand off? 
That's fucking vicious and scary that she would do that and the look on Ash's face. You find that humorous? I find that fucking horrific. Oh my well, god. Well, yeah, they, when you say someone's chewing their own hand off, it's horrific. But the way it's done in the movie, it's it's pretty funny. And that leads me to two other uh, memories of of again, I think you mentioned a slap, but remember when Ash gets hit back, uh, the whole dresser thing falls on top of him or whatever it may be. It's comedic. <laughs> There's a comedic e- energy there as well uh when he hacks the guy apart the blood covers the light which is super cool uh and That's takes awesome. the whole oh, yeah. the whole scene red uh beautiful. it is beautiful it's great uh but then also the aftermath of his buddy being chopped up is horrific yet funny as well when you see all the moving parts all the limbs sort of twitching and moving still yes <laughs> but all the different colors kind of make it fucking scary different colors of different fluids coming out of their body that's just fucked up it's a fucked up thought I don't know something about them being in that camp and in that in that situation. I just I don't know. I'm glad you enjoy it that way. I just and I'm glad I enjoy it the way I do. I guess. It, bottom line is we all enjoy it, so I'm no use nitpicking all night about that. <laughs> Absolutely not. We'll you know? be here all night. No, it's a it's a it's a right. great movie. Final thoughts. <laughs> Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. <laughs> be nice to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Remember to have your pet spayed and neutered. We'll put Bob oh Barker in there and everything. Might as well get everybody in there. I like that. His name is Bob Barker and he talks about dogs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Bob Barker like was my first word when I was three. Really? What? I couldn't talk until I was three. And my mom told me like years back, yeah, your first words were Bob Barker when you were <laughs> old. And then you said bath. I was like, oh, did, did we know Bob Barker? <laughs> <laughs> I think Bob Barker touched Watson. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. But hey, he made me the man I am today. <laughs> and Christian's first words were Clyde Barker. <laughs> <laughs> and he sold those words in his Sign this. Sign this. Sign this and sell it. Yeah. yeah. eBay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. what, anybody, final thoughts, Watts? There's a segment for you. <laughs> final thoughts, Watts. <laughs> That's Nine awesome. out of ten. Nine out of ten for me. That's my final thought. All right. I did my Friday two analogy to it. The pre-icon status. I love it. Awesome. Well, it's ten out of ten for me. I absolutely nice. fucking adore this film. Yeah. I kind of suspected that. I hover. I do have it rated as a ten out of ten on my IMDb, but I'm going to say that it was a nine point five out of ten for me. I'm going to. Uh... Yeah, and I just, I just want to point out a few things we didn't talk about. The fact that they use real ammo. That's fucking awesome. Ammo. They should just fire it. Yeah, fire yeah, it. Yeah. Real, ammun- yeah. real ammunition. Ammunition. <laughs> real ammunition. Oh, yeah. There was guns. <laughs> and the oatmeal and the cockroaches and the melting corpse and the stop motion scene is fucking gross, but awesome oh, at the same awesome. time. I'm kind of... I came up a little bit. I'm 9.25. Yeah, I threw out a quarter Ooh. rating. A Ooh, new this, number. You know what? Oh, I forgot you guys did that. I legit can send you a screen cap that mine says 9.25, but I forgot you guys did quarter ratings. We that might make you. a difference. We believe that might you. make a difference in the Hall of Fame. Oh, no, it's, it's still in the Hall it's of Fame. It's in the Hall of Fame, yeah. Yes. It's in the Hall of Fame at a 28.75. <laughs> 11 out of 10. <laughs> 8 out of 5. Marco, write this down. 28.75. 8 out of 5 is <laughs> <5. laughs> the best of the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <five>. Brilliant. <laughs> if you haven't okay. seen the movie, check it out and then tell us. If you think it's straight horror, if oh, you think it's now that's horror, or if you think it's gay horror, <laughs> <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth. Friday yes. the Thirteenth. Another yeah. shout out. There you go. I think that most people are going to agree with with you guys and, and say the comedy just because it feels good. I yeah. don't, I disagree. I think a lot of people see this as again that straight the straight horror movie of the series. Yeah, I, mm. I agree with that. I I feel like. I was, that's why I got so excited when uh, Christian pointed out the comedy, because that was the first thing I wanted to bring up. Interesting. <laughs> but I know I agree with you, Brendan. Awesome. Cool. Awesome oh. is right. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Will it be the only one? Stay tuned, headaches. <laughs> I, want to, I want to use this segue to talk a little bit. Watson brought up the musical, and I had the luxury of seeing that as well, because yes. it, it is fantastic. I saw it when it was playing in Toronto years ago. Uh, I think we're going back to like it's a long time. And I got I sat in the splatter zone. Yeah. So that's where, you, where where they say, like, there's a zone where you won't get hit with blood, and there's a zone where you may get hit with blood. Oh, it's blood. like a Gallagher show. And we got hit with blood. 
No, there's no watermelons. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> I excited at the prospect of watermelon. Yeah. Was that a, <clears throat> was that a seed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. And what a treat that show was because it was fun. Now, of course, it, it, it's a musical. If you don't know anything about it, go to YouTube, check it out. If you haven't heard the song, what the fuck is that? Oh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. I, I love that song. Oh my god! It is. My son, my son was wanting to quote it. I was like, and he doesn't swear at all. Yeah. He won't. He won't do it even around his friends. But uh, good boy. Uh, but he's just like, oh, I, that's my favorite one. Uh, and he calls it "What the heck was that?" Because he thinks <laughs> clean comedy's funnier. And so I'm just like, I yo. <laughs> He's got to come on the show. I'll I'll teach him a thing or two about clean comedy. Okay. Oh, yeah. dude, he'll be a better guest than I could ever be. Bill Cosby, <laughs> Bill Cosby versus Dave Chappelle. Who's the better comic? <laughs> Who? Bill Cosby always puts me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Christian. I stumbled over it, and you took it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, were you getting to that? Because you just set me up. I, I, I was like, "Who? Who?" I oh, okay. even... <laughs> <laughs> you lobbed it up there. I was like, "I'm swinging at this." <laughs> Perfect. That's it. It's a team effort. Top of the mops. <laughs> Top of the mops. Evil Dead Two's next, right? Evil Dead Two's. I'll just finish that story by saying the splatter zone. If it ever comes back, sit in the splatter zone. Are we ready for uh, to continue on? Yes. And it's going to take us to Evil Dead 2. Okay, Evil Dead 2, 1987, written and directed by Sam Raimi, also written by Scott Spiegel. The lone survivor of an onslaught of flesh-possessing spirits, flesh-possessing spirits, excuse me, holds up in a cabin with a group of strangers while the demons continue their attack. Holes. Fantastic reading. Let, okay. Can I start? Let me start, Dave, because you started start. the last time. Start on <laughs> this. We when we did the Phantasm franchise, which is if you haven't checked out, please check that out because it is the year of the franchise show on Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast. We're doing McDonald's. <laughs> you stole my joke now. Oh, were you gonna say that? Kids. No way. No, I said it last <laughs> episode. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> wow. On, JP, step anyway, up. yeah, on. step up to the plate. <laughs> Listen to your own show. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, Watson. Putting up sad emojis. <laughs> this movie, as I said in the Fant- for Phantasm 2, Phantasm 2 kind of was like a souped-up redo sequel. Evil Dead 2 is the same thing. I know a lot of people argue that it's only the begin, like it's only after that beginning opening where he arrives with his girlfriend, and then it's like when the the evil force comes through the door, hits him in the face. That's where Part Two sort of starts. But I disagree. I think they, because they didn't have the rights, they kind of recreated the idea of what happened in part one and kind of remade it, souped it up. So instead of a group of friends going, it's him and his girlfriend, and then the group of quote-unquote friends, which are all the other people that show up at the cabin, arrive later. I think it's a carefully reconstructed remake of part one. I used to think that. I don't agree with that. I don't agree. Right, I don't either. I used to think like you, but I think it makes perfect sense what you said about when the evil comes in at the end of part one and, and, and it cuts that, that it transitions perfectly when they do it in part two to the same thing. And you know, it's him waking up from that. Well, and of they, course they couldn't get all the actors. So they just got the girl and at least she was a prettier girl. Well, and, and uh, that, that was right from them. <laughs> That's right from the filmmakers. However, I mean, it, it's really kind of crazy that they recreated it. Why not just tell a story that we went up to the cabin with a group of friends and, and whatever they recreate it. With just Too one much to actress. Show. Not not only do they recreate they it, but they ch- they change it from five college uh, college kids renting a cabin to two lovebirds breaking and entering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the, the I, owner I, I, could I, show I, up at any moment. Like, what? yeah, why? right. Yeah, uh, why? I agree with that. This why is what I'm saying. That? This is what I'm saying. It's like a carefully reconstructed, souped up remake of it because he's going to the cabin for the first time, and then all shit hits the fan, and then. There's there's a tree scene again, not done quite as explicitly, but every there's certain scenes. There's a mirror scene done again, just done a little okay. differently. So there's all these tributes to the original reconstructed. So it's like we learned what we did in the first one, and we're going to reconstruct it. And truthfully, this has a better flow to it because of the way that they they structure it. Personally, I I guess I should throw that out. That's my opinion. I don't of course. know. I don't know about that. And I'll just uh, let me say one thing. I'm going to agree with you maybe now because why are the doors fixed? The doors the doors should all be blown off their hinges if you're going by part one and this being the next one. All that stuff happens and the doors are back. Uh, uh, they're, they're attached to the house still. They're not blown off. 
So if all that did happen, you're going. They, they should be blown off. That's one thing. Number two, the pace of this film. Here's the difference. In part one, I really enjoy when they're all in the cabin together and all hell is breaking loose and everything's going on. In part two, it's much better when Ash is alone. But when everybody comes in halfway through the movie, it, it kind of loses its charm a little bit. I think all the best moments are solo Ash in part two, and all the best moments are the group all together in part I one. I could not <laughs> agree more with that, Dave. I do agree with that I, as well, yeah. It, word for word what you just said. Because the characters in the this show. one that they bring in in the second half, to me, just feel like throwaway characters. You're right. They're not as good as that. That's what I'm saying. You, you well, were see, right on, on the acting. Oh, I disagree with that. I think they're... I'm sorry, they're, Watson. Please. Sorry, sorry Watson. I, I just don't know if I would say they're necessarily throwaway. I would just say this is where we have Ash at his most iconic and... Oh, not maybe most iconic. I guess I technically agree. probably Army of Darkness, but I think... I, I don't know. That's debatable, but... And that's why it's stronger with Ash Solo, because he's now Ash. He wasn't really Ash then in number one, but he's Ash now. And yeah. I think that's why it overshadows, you know, and could maybe, you know, it, it could be perceived that those other characters are throwaway. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that, though. I mean, it's, uh, a, bad, it's yeah. a bad term to use, but they're not as... They're not as strong as he is. They're not as, and they're not as strong yeah. as the original five. No, they no, are strong. They're yeah. better than the other ones. No, I no I, way. I, 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 I think so. better. The, no, da but... the daughter, th th there's a connection oh, to why she's, the boyfriend. She's... I think they fixed up the whole character thing. And Watson, you already said it better the first time. Uh, and I totally agree with you. If if Ash in part one is like Jason in two, Ash in part two is like Jason in three, that's like the start of the icon. And that's where yeah. Jason 3 is. And then, of course, Army of Darkness would be your f final chapter. The full oh, icon absolutely. and full... Yeah, I think the first yeah, half yeah, of this yeah. film, even yeah. though it's comical it. in the in the way that everything's coming to life and the way Ash is kind of laughing and being goofy, is quite scary because you realize he's having a mental breakdown at this point. I do like the fact that they throw in the background story with the professor and his, and his wife, and now the daughter comes with... I don't know who, who the fuck Ed is, the most useless character in film history. But uh, guy, but she comes with, with pages from a book where, where where did she get them from? And she, she knows jack shit, and I just found her to be just annoying and stupid. I love her. Personally, I love her because I, I've always been very attracted to her. Oh, she's there's a pretty woman. Pretty there's woman something boy. about her, good build, everything. I think she's hot. But the thing is, the cast in part one, I don't think you were ragging on them as actors. I enjoy Scott and Cheryl and Shelley more than I enjoy uh, Annie and, 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 and you know, uh, the, the hip couple and, and Ed. And Bobby Joe and Jake. Bobby Joe and Jake. I just, when they Jake. arrive, great things still happen, but it's, I just much more, I, I just enjoy what happens in part one more with that group. And you were, when you were saying about them not being good actors, I was like, you know what? Maybe not, maybe not the greatest actors, but it doesn't hinder the, no, it didn't. It didn't change my perspective on me caring about them. In this one, I didn't care when when Jake and them show up, and Ed, and even Annie. Annie, I guess you kind of care for because you think she's going to be like the final girl with Ash. But even at that point, I'm kind of like they're so idiotic at times that it's comical, but also frustrating because it's like they may have gone a little overboard with the comedy. A, a little. They did. No, they, they go crazy. All right, but they, all right. they went. They That's, went insane with the comedy. Yeah. No, they, went, they go insane in the next film. In this film, oh, yeah. I'll make the comparison. As long as we're comparing franchises, this is like Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Army of Darkness is like Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Oh, <laughs> you're killing me. You're killing me. You don't you think so? From a no, I, I'd say point, they're both, think I think so? they're both like Nightmare on Elm Street 3. <laughs> That's all. Are you I'm, fucking I'll, serious? Yeah, well, yeah, I have a special I'm kind of with shit. Christian on that one. Yeah, but, so but I, 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 love, I love Evil Dead 2 as well. Evil oh. Dead 2 uh, has all the craziness of the original. Of course, a, a bit more of a budget now, so you've got souped up effects. Uh, and that could turn people off. Like this one, uh, if you're wanting the grittiness of part one, that's all left behind now. And everything's brightly lit. And, and lots of mood lighting and crazy projection and, and lots more production value. Uh, but that's also what brings its charm. And you've got like these crazy ass moments of like uh, someone stomping on the cellar door on top of the deadite's head and the eyeball popping out and going into the girl's mouth. And just <laughs> so many great little oh, moments like it. that. Yeah. Classic. But that and doesn't the eyeball cam. 
that doesn't lead to Thank you, B. I was going to bring that up. Why did the other guy get possessed and not her? But that's that's what what said. Because trying to make sense of the possessions in this franchise yeah. would actually drive you insane. <laughs> I'll give you that one. There's no definitely. consistency or continuity in the possession of characters either, which I, I, I could buy. Because you're right. I, wa- I watched the one mouth. gentleman's Nothing. review on YouTube. I, I can't remember his name, but I'm going to look it up. 616? No, it was somebody I, – I just typed in, like, because I wanted to see what, what other people were thinking. I forget his name. I'm going to give him a shout-out on the next one. I, NES Ruler 22. Oh, he's the that, best. That was the guy, yeah. I thought so. Okay, little, cool. little Jew bastard. Did you know Boy, originally fey. they wanted a black guy to uh, to be the lead? They were going to call him Ashy Williams. Oh, hey. <laughs> I will swallow your cocoa butter hole. I will swallow your cocoa butter hole. These are the ones you wrote down, Watson. Ashy Williams. And he's the brother of Lamont Configuration. (laughs) Yeah, 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 Ashy Williams. They do a crossover. Ashy Williams solves the Lamont Configuration. (laughs) And it's an urban nightmare. So I'm alone in thinking, okay, so you guys are just just thinking it's a straight sequel. We know, we understand that they couldn't get all the actors back, but to set the story up the way that they do, I just think it's a carefully reconstructed They, they, do, they ch- obviously change the things. Like, Linda this time is, you know, she's not stabbed with a pencil. Uh, she has, you know, the window scene, and, and Ash goes back to the bridge and knows it's out, but he's alone this time because it's in the original he was with Cheryl. So there are things that make it seem like it's totally a remake, but I like to think at that pickup point, I like to go back to the storyline of one. Because why wouldn't it be? And, and I'd like to continue that because Because they show them drive right up just together, yeah, but, the two of them. But even when we get into like Army know. of Dark, not to jump ahead, when he opens his trunk, there's a chemistry textbook, which means he he was a college student at Michigan State with his friends. So I'd like to even though part three changes the beginning again, I still like to take part one's beginning and apply it to the starting point of part two. But I can see yeah, yeah, yeah. what you're okay. saying completely. Okay. See, I tend, I, I tend to agree with, with Christian on this, but, uh, man, the, the thing is about this franchise that, you know, we, I think we've seen in other franchises that we all hold near and dear to us is that sometimes you have to make a decision about am I going to get hung up on the continuity or am I down with these characters? And I think for me, that's why number two, and just I'll just throw it out there, is my favorite of the franchise because – Something about the concoction of comedy, the overkill violence, the, you know, just like Christian said, this sort of revisionist uh, history remake thing that they're doing here, remake sequel thing they're doing, which is confuses people, you know, confounds people this many years later. For me, it's this perfect concoction. The only thing that would stand in my way is, okay, are you really okay with writers just dropping the ball like that and then i'm like wait is that dropping the ball though or is it you know film rights is it you know and then i sort of just find myself not getting hung up on that and then i'm just staring at ash the whole time being a gangster the whole damn time and i guess that's kind of what just it, it's this character driven force to me that's that's why i still like army of darkness despite you know what some people have to say about it i think even jamie uh salmons likes army of darkness more than number two if i remember correctly from yeah, the skeleton yes. crew i remember yeah. hearing that episode so, as well yeah. yeah, so cra- crazy there, even though two's my favorite. I, I feel her. She she lists her reasons out, and, you know, that's all you can ask of us podcasters. Say Don't why talk you Ryan. think. What... Yeah, right? Oh, yeah, right? But uh, that's, what, that's all I'm saying is, like, for me, just two is just driven by the force that's Ash, and I love to see just him step into that iconic status. And so for me, it is it is uh, Nightmare 3 stepping into it. Because in Nightmare 1, you know, Freddy wasn't Freddy yet. He's in the dark. You barely see him. He has some good one line. He's like, yo, who's that? Uh, but then by three, it's like, man, that is Freddy. He's not Fred Krueger. This guy, Fred Krueger, he's Freddy now. And this is Ash fucking Williams. I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm just down. I agree. Yeah, but uh, listen, I concur. I'm going to say one thing. The reason they didn't put the other characters in there, in the flashback scenes in this, the movie would have been 20 minutes longer. I just think it was a time constraint thing. And they had things that they wanted to do. And by having all those extra people there to rehash all that stuff, and because they had to kill everybody. You know, I mean, I think that's simply the reason. I they thought just, it was just a rights issue. 
Right what? Scott didn't want to fucking come? Come on, get the fuck out of here. Different no studio? Maybe. Yeah, the different studios, yeah. Yeah, so maybe the studio that did part one was like... So you're no. not allowed to put a character with no name in the fucking film? Well, that's what, well I agree with that. I would, really wish they would have just said, oh, I, I went camping with my five friends. They all died. Here's... Why not start it with the camera going right up to his mouth and starting it from there? Like, I mean, yeah. I mean the you know whole why? point of... Oh, tell me why, Dave. Because, they wanted new... <laughs> because that shit is epic. Because the shit with the new girlfriend it's, and everything that goes on with her is it great. Is. And they wanted yep. to do that gag and there was no other way to do it except to have it be his girlfriend I and haunting you. him and dancing yeah. and doing That's... all that shit and the chainsaw and, and the, the tormenting from her to him and him having his heart broken. There was a lot that went into that hip whole bearing, angle. Hip bearing a yes. mannequin. Yeah. So cool. mannequin, oh, mannequin. Yeah. Why does the hair change from blonde to brunette, blonde to brunette in between animations as well? I mean, there's crazy I, there. I laugh my ass off when she puts her head back on and flies away and goes, ah! it, disappears. <laughs> it disappears into it. the tree. It's great. I got to be honest, though. That scene still, it frightens me, though. It's kind of, it's very creepy. It is kind of creepy. Yeah, she's decreed yeah. very quickly. Yeah, like very six quickly. hours. She's yeah. a skeleton. <laughs> oh, I Brandon. know. Immediate. Yes. <laughs> Brandon's like, number two is straight up, this is horror. Straight up, this is comedy. Yeah. It's not straight. I'll tell you what. It takes 20 minutes for them to get into comedy. And it all begins with him saying, you're going down. That's when the whole fucking tone of this film changes and this series. That's all it took. You're going down. What? You would have never done that in part him one. Him lopping the, his oh, girl, it, the second he lops his girlfriend's head off. With the, the same thing as part one, the beheading. It was an epic beheading in part one and a recreation in part two. Yeah, but it, it, there, there's a to, there's a total shift, even more so right right out of the gate, especially when the camera hits him and he does all the the wacky twists around and whatever. You already know, lands right into the puddle face first. That's cool. The way that wasn't the, a no, puddle. It's that was an cool. Olympic swimming pool. <laughs> it's super cool, but you can see everything there. It's a wackiness right from the get go. Yeah, there's that term. I don't. I don't think that's wacky. I just think it's good a good shot. It, it, it's it's having a budget and doing new tricks with your camera, like having the smoke go backwards. And 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 you know when he first gets possessed, all this. I think that shit's fucking brilliant. And and his eyes, you know, the color returning to him when the sun comes up, and the way his face looks. I think that's all great. I I never saw that as comedy at all. I didn't. I, 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 I never got com- comedy later. I liked it as well. I thought it was kind of comical that all of a sudden the sun coming up. Which draws the uh, the evil, but you know it's just again yeah. one of those things we're trying to make sense of. It. It's like don't. if you're trying to make yeah. sense of this movie, you're gonna have a hard time with it because there's <laughs> a lot of stupid shit that goes down as well. But fun roller coaster stupid shit. That whole scene where the lamp's laughing and oh, that's yeah. my favorite part of the movie, Christian. And he's just going up and down with <laughs> yeah. the lamp. I, my son, the first time he saw that lofty shit, was like, "What is he doing? Can we re- rewind that?" I'm like. We can rewind that. I think he's doing oh, lunges. Man. Looks like he's doing yes. lunges. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love who's laughing now. Who's yeah. laughing now? A farewell to arms. Farewell to arms. Fucking it's great. great. It, it, it's Brutal. great comedy. Even the chalk outline of the chainsaw. Just yeah. laughable. Like, who chainsaw. wants a chalk? Yes, yes. Like, Work shit. Awesome. Work shit. So many- or, um, okay, so guys, if you're trying to find uh, some sensical narrative of our review of this that you might be thrown off because we're just throwing shit all over the place but this is how this movie is it is a party movie if there when right right at the beginning when there wasn't a lot of these you you had more straight lace but this was like like street trasher and toxic avenger for that matter not the same film necessarily i'm just saying it wants to impress you with how over the top it's going to go with its effects similar to what part one did but this one does it with Almost Monty Python esque comedic overtone to it. Yeah, it's filled with great moments. And maybe I'm saying it's too funny, but there is a lot of no. comedy in this movie. There is. Someone's but... in my fruit cellar. You think that's comedy? I, I love don't think that's comedy. I love it. I just, I just love that. I think it's funny that Ash is locked in the in this in the uh, trap door, and then later Jake is pulled through the trap door, even though it's still locked. So Ash could have technically crawled out. <laughs> Huh. Silence. I yeah. never thought about that. I, I hate the know. movie now. <laughs> it's, it's an actual fact. Do you see how far it opens while it's still locked when Henrietta grabs Jake's head and how much blood comes out? Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood is wow. great. Blood's and great. then and here's what I don't get. Right. What you guys are complaining about in the first movie about uh, the blood being on his face and then not being there. That totally happens in this film. Of What's with Annie? Yeah. And she goes in there. Too. All that shit comes out. It's fucking tremendous. And 
And then all of a sudden, you look and she's got like a couple spots here and a couple spots on her shirt, a little on her face. I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> but I some pointed that out. Yeah. It's great though. This movie. Yeah. Like I have the word "great" written in my notes about ten times. That, that I'll tell you how I feel about this film. There's just so many parts that are epic. Like like that scene when everything comes to life when 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 the deer first turns its head. <laughs> Yeah. And that's <laughs> and then for the lamp, <laughs> that it sounds funny. exactly like Popeye. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing and everything. I remember the first. This is one of those few movies that I definitely recall the first time I saw it and the reactions I got for all those the eyeball in the mouth, the freaking the laughing lamps in the deer and all and the hand, which none of us have even mentioned, is fucking brilliant. And Bruce Campbell's performance with all that stuff is incredible. The only knock I have is I wish they didn't have that little voice in the hand. That's what made it a little shark jumpy by having that part. I wish they could cut that part out, but it's still amazing. And his performance is amazing. Him shattering dishes over his head. uh, Like that part is great. It's so physical comedy. But that, I'm so surprised another, you like that. I thought you would hate that day for whatever reason. Another big mistake in that when he's hitting himself with the dishes is, is he's holding the knife in the other hand, yet the hand is crawling to the butcher knife across the room. So wouldn't the hand just be able to get the knife, which is right right there in his other hand? Holy fuck. I thought Christian was the editor. Apparently it's you. <laughs> like wow. I said, I've listened to reviews. I watched Mr. it. I, did, I, there's a lot, I mean, look, there's so many issues. How come Ed gets possessed just by getting slammed into a wall? Nothing happened. We just got slammed into a wall. He's possessed. I don't there's mind star- the possession. There's a Star Wars moment in this. I'm surprised Christian hasn't even made fun of Professor oh, Nobly comes back as Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> save <laughs> yourself. Save yes. yourself. Oh, save my soul. Save my soul. There's a Jedi moment. Sure. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. Bobby, Joe, and Jake, I, like, I just, it was just kind of stupidity. The way... Everything they're witnessing, and yet Jake doesn't believe in anything that's going on. He throws the pages in the cellar. Bobby Joe, who's witnessed all these horrific things, decides that the minute the severed hand touches her, that's when she's had enough, and she's just going to run it onto the woods. And then he give you a cheaper version of the tree tree kill. Yeah. I do like I do like the things in her face though. Well, I like do love when she gets dragged by the tree branches when she goes through that puddle. There's like it actually explodes oh, with water. Yes. <laughs> Here's an improvement in this film. Over the first one, when the bridge is out, even though it's an obvious drawing, I I like that scene more. And he gets in, he's like, no, and he sees, and it's all curved up. I I, I prefer that to the way they did it in the in part one. That's I thought it was one. funny. I laughed more at this yeah. one. You thought it was comical, really? Like a fucking seven forty seven. Dave, you're outlandish. shocking me when you're like more not effect. thinking. Like the first one, he's thinking is like he's not seen comedy in this one. I thought this one was very comical. And right from the from the onset, like right out of the gate, this one was okay. You made it sound like you were like, oh, you're finding that funny. How about Ash out running a demon? The whole thing is goofy. Ash outruns a demon. Yeah, outsmarts a demon by running and hiding. How do you fucking a? But through the through the the through the behind the walls. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's hilarious, but I felt like it just went a little overboard for me for my taste. Oh God, I love interesting. This This is interesting. I I I didn't. Wow, wow. And I'm a horror comedy guy, yet because of the the connection with all the characters in the first one, even though I, I maintain that the acting was terrible, the characters are still likable. You didn't get that connection with Ash and Jake and and uh, Bobby Sue, whatever the fuck her name is. And Bobby, even Joe. Annie, Bobby Joe. Bobby and, Joe. <laughs> and, and Annie, for that matter. Yeah. I well, just, no, I, I agree. You don't get the connection with them because it's not kids that drove up there together. There's exactly. no camaraderie. I do like when he when he p- gets possessed again and he chucks her, picks her up, he bench presses her, and he chucks her across the room. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. So, it's Brandon, cool. to, to, so it sounds to me like for you, uh, I guess, uh, more more hinges on the collective group of characters rather than, I guess, how I see it, where for me, the high score I'm going to give this is based on just the, the I guess, Raimi's clearer vision, at least t- how I perceive it, uh, kind of clearer, more stepped-up vision slash – Ash's just more pronounced presence in this film, whereas for you it sounds like you're you you were kind of craving a little more of the collective. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Huh. But but also I agree with you that this is Ash's coming out party. <laughs> hey, when are you gonna? <laughs> hey now. <laughs> no, it is. This is when oh, he becomes he's great. Yeah. When he yeah, becomes absolutely. Ash. When he stops being perfect. Ashley and he's Ash. This is and that's, And all the points I give this film 
I primarily for that is what I'm going to oh, say okay. when we okay. get to the rating. Hey, I swallow your soul. <laughs> you swallow I love this. that part. Swallow. <laughs> swallow. I love what. I love him when it says, hey, though. It's got a tender. <laughs> Who would say that? Hey. And he looks at him. I swallow your soul. I swallow your soul. <laughs> I love that. Hey. <laughs> I watched this so many times. I rented this movie like more times than probably oh, any movie. Me too. So many times. And then now. I finally just said, I got to buy it. <laughs> like, this movie, I remember watching with a group of friends and half of them had left. They just they just couldn't get into it. They just thought, yeah, it was nuts. But the other half loved it. And, and to this day, probably still quote it. And were the ones that came with me to see Army of Darkness as well. So there are people that found this movie boring. I don't know how you can find this movie what? boring. It's 80 minutes long or 82 minutes. What? Brandon just I raised his I hand, everybody. I, I found it dragged in the second half. I did. I looked at the clock and I'm, and it is, it, you're, like you said, they're all 80 minutes long. They're all real short. But I was checked out a little. Wow. I'll tell you, I, I, I'll meet him. I'll meet him on that halfway because it's so top heavy when, when ash is by himself and the brilliance of that fucking 30 minutes of him alone and everything he's going through and the hand and uh, the, all that amazing stuff it slows down a little bit when the other characters come in and it's like he said you don't care as much about those characters and there are some good gags after but uh, something does happen slightly when when when, when, the, when the group comes in when ash is alone it's fucking brilliant and of course, it can't be a whole movie of one guy, so I, I we get that. But I, I'll meet him halfway. But the great stuff weighs too heavy for me to let it hinder the experience that much. I, I came up on this film. I grew up on it, and I, I love the film. So, but I know what it. you're saying. <laughs> I came yeah. on it. I'm coming on it tonight. You know. <laughs> this is a. I don't want to blow my load. Anybody else have to add anything? I'm going to ask a question. Sure. Maybe you guys can help me with this answer. How come Annie? decides that that thing in the basement is not my mother do you think that the demon got the story wrong you were born in september on a morning so strange that it should be snowing in september because she has her hook line and sinker when she sings a lullaby then she then she's go over then she tells that story and then all of a sudden she's like that thing in the basement is not my mother do you think the demon fucked up the dates because she goes no you were born in september. i think she, i think she's trying to convince snowing. herself because why would she flip no, nah, I think she's just mentally trying to convince herself that's not her mother because of what they need to do. Okay. More so than a mistake. Yeah, I wish it was what you were saying, Dave. That that yeah. was some kind of mess. But I I I guess I side with uh I guess I'm gonna kind of echo Brandon's sentiment on that. Elsius. That's cool. I just I've I've always wondered that. I've seen the movie so many times that oh, something I've always been very honest with. I agree with Brandon too. Shockingly. You know, I yeah. just <laughs> shocking. <laughs> I just feel like you know they set you up with Professor Nobly and and. You know, he's telling everything, and Annie comes back from her trip to get these pages, these missing pages in Necronomicon. And for the first half of the second half that she's in it, she's completely useless, useless, blah, 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 useless. And she's not articulating, like me, what <laughs> what needs to be done with these pages. But then in, like, the last five minutes, she's like, we need to say the one spell to bring bring the evil to flesh and the second spell to open the vortex to send it back. And, like... It's like, why weren't you saying this earlier when Jake has a gun to you and Bobby Joe's running around? Like, where were you? Like, what the hell? Because the demon didn't manifest itself in a presence in front of them yet. It was possessing others, but it, it, the shit really didn't hit the fan until later on when it became that thing making those fucking chimpanzee noises for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> giraffe Henrietta. I'll take, I'll, take yes. puppy, I'll take puppy dog Scott over Giraffe Henrietta any day. <laughs> <laughs> Lick wow. my muffin. Lick my muffin. <laughs> ben Bummer. <laughs> oh, shit. I can sort of see where Brandon's going with this, uh, just in the way he's talking. And I, I, I just, yeah. I'm like dumb, dumbfounded like Dave was, though. No, I mean, I, I don't agree. I can see that his rating's going to be, I don't know if it's significantly lower, but I don't lower know. than this first it, it, it is significantly lower than where you guys are going to be. You're fucking and, killing me over here. And I'm sorry to do this, but. I, I raise it up a little bit. I, I can't go any higher than a seven point five. Oh my lord! About that that uh, we're not we're gonna have to disqualify his rating for for, <laughs> for the rest. Of hey, the if show. you guys if you guys put it in the Hall of Fame with Watson, awesome. I'll recognize it as a Hall of Famer. I'll go back. I'll rewatch it ten more times. But I don't know this time around, especially after watching one. Nice though. Oh, but wow. wow, 
Well, let's find out. I don't know if it's going to make it because I'm, I'm, I'm giving it a nine, nine out of 10. Well, we'll let Watson go last, our guest. And uh, this has always been, uh, like I said, this is a personal favorite. It was on my ranking of best when we did best part twos. Uh, it's a 10 <laughs> out of 10 for me. Always has been. Oh, it's man. Just a roller coaster ride of pure enjoyment. Give it an 8.75, Watson. <laughs> well, get, get ready for a Hall of Famer, baby, because <laughs> Christian, this is a 10 out of 10. If you heard episode two of Horror Corridor, this was like my number fourth favorite in my top 10. And granted, it, there were like six different top 10s that are top 31s for that episode that I considered. I wound up going with one that I thought would get a little more talk that I don't know if I'd stand by now, but Evil Dead 2 was in like in the top five of all six of those lists. And so I, I'm at a 10 out of 10. I love this. It's just I feel like this is where Raimi really stepped up as a filmmaker to what we consider him to be now. I think his legacy really began here. And, you know, you start – you start going back, and obviously it began, you know, didn't begin here. You know, it starts at the start. But I think this is where it just it stepped up. His vision became clear, and this was Raimi just giving it to us hard in the face. Oh, with in the face, in the face. Yeah, no. So I, yeah, I'm at a ten out of ten. Does, what's the math? Does that make a Hall of Famer? Ten? Yeah, twenty nine. Nine. Yeah, but just yeah. Well, yeah. Brandon, yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. Like that's it. If you look at his filmography. Uh, and if you want to check out his shorts, check out his shorts. <laughs> Short films. <Yeah. laughs> like shorts. I'm I'll swallow you whole. Let me check out your shorts. <laughs> like I said earlier at the start of this review, you can see his progression as a filmmaker rapidly over Evil Dead to Crime Wave to Evil Dead 2. And yes. Well, sure, yeah. six full years stride. at No, but full yeah. stride, but still just two movies under his belt. And it, it's full stride. This is what, what he becomes. And then he takes it with Dark Man. And I even followed him into his non-genre, like his westerns and the Quick and the like, Dead. Like Wait, he did Quick the Quick and the Dead. And the dead? Yeah, with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and, and Sharon Stone and, Sharon and Stone. Russell Crowe. I yeah. did not know that was him. Wow, yeah, man. that's awesome. Right on. Yeah, I'm blown cool. away right now. That's awesome. <laughs> I never even saw it, but somehow I knew that. I was nervous. <laughs> about this I really was nervous. You I'm still nervous. Western. What do you say? Nervous. You're nervous. I'm nervous Just about less. the backlash I'm going to get for my low score. Ah, seven and a half. It's not, not, and it's you know what? Nobody, nobody cares for very long anyway. <laughs> nah. you, you should have just said the truth. Nobody cares what you think. Brandon. No, not what you think. It's just, you know, like, I'm not going to say names or anything, but I listen to podcasts where, you know, they have this, they're scared of their, their own opinions by what people are going to think. And honestly, aside from when they're listening and as they're typing while listening, uh, ultimately, unless you make a big deal of it in future episodes, they're just going to be like, ah, oh, that's silly Jewish boy. <laughs> you know what? To be honest, my ratings change drastically at times it happened last year with uh with raw Rise of leslie vernon it happened with leslie vernon raw was a seven or a 7.5 for me it wound up being my number five movie of the year brandon the same thing happened to me because of the dave z second view i went back and watched my top 17 because i'm supposed to put out an episode for that i guess for my the podcast i have and it, the <laughs> oh, notes yeah. are gone top notes 17 are of gone. 2041 yes it, exactly oh my god and uh yeah raw made in a was not supposed to be on that list, and it did it uh, yeah. because of the Dave Z second watch. I couldn't believe it. Just yeah, it went down on the second. No, it went up. It wasn't oh, okay. supposed to be on the list at all. And then Brandon it went down on the second. It, it well, went up for April second. <laughs> well, that's that. Two Hall of Famers. Boom, boom. No thanks yeah. to B. Don't yell at me. It's still in the Hall of Fame. Well, that's okay. Will that be the end of it? We shall see. Army of Darkness is next. Let's do it. Okay, Army of Darkness, written and directed by Sam Raimi, also written by Ivan Raimi. A man is accidentally transported to 1300 AD where he must battle an army of the dead and retrieve the Necronomicon so he can return home. And this one's from 1992. And the first time we hear Deadite. No, no. They say it at the end of part two. I, 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 it was in my notes. I forgot to say that. Oh, it's, do they say it when he, at, at the very end? The very, yeah, very end. The very, very end. When he lands and fucking the... It's, um, it, it's mentioned of deadites, yeah. Ah. But they pick it right up. Oh, well, they actually they, they switch, don't. They switch it around, yeah. That's my beef. And I'm not going to start off with the negative. Let's let Watson talk because he's been too fucking quiet. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, you know what's funny about this movie is where number two leaves off. And I, I'm not going to start on a negative either. But this is, this is one of those films where I, I just feel like once again, okay, this is where you have to make a decision about the franchise. Am I more invested in continuity 
or the characters. It can go either way. For me, my friends, this is this is where we get all the iconic Ash lines that you see on the T-shirt. Is this Freddy Four? I'm not. I'm not. And, and I don't like Freddy Four, by the way. So, eh. but like, is this Freddy Four? Could it be argued that it, it goes that way? It could be argued, and that's a fair argument. I'm not really going to, you know, press anything against that. But like, it's just like, you know, when Friday the Thirteenth realized that they are that it can be a legitimately kind of ridiculous franchise later on when it sort of there are some people who believe that six is when the franchise comes on comes on comes into itself steps into itself and i'm, I'm not going to say that i believe that but some people believe about friday because i'm just been on threads lately because i just took my son through the friday franchise some people are like yo six is when they finally got it it's like interesting i never would have huh. thought that what, i don't they get a bad movie well, Shut the fuck I don't, up. I don't, I don't, come on, I like six. I like six. But Thank you, six. Is, this is where they finally got it wrong. Hey, no, but the, I think the, the only one that should be talking the, right now. The argument is that the that the Friday franchise sort of realized, okay, for five movies, we got this, you know, this killer at a at a at a camp. You know, let's have some fun with it. I guess it's always been kind of fun. Let's finally just step into the fun. And to start off with a positive, not to get to the negatives, I think this is where. This is where we get all the T-shirt quotes. This is my boomstick. This is where we get all those lines. Is this is this give me some sugar baby or is that yeah. number two? Yep. Give me yeah, some sugar baby. All here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Hail is where to you the get king, baby. Hail to the king baby. This is where yep. you get all the lines. Yo, she and this bitch. Is when, <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and this is and the reason. This movie is why we can rattle those lines off. So I have respect for it. In that sense, he's Freddy with the one-liners now. Oh, the, you, and, you forgot the the most important one. Yo, Ash, what did you want to be when you grew up? If you grew up. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck it <that> up. <laughs> <laughs> the Friday Six line. Whatever that shitty line is. We, we uh, know. What were you going to be? What were you going to be? What were you going to be if you grew up? Great, you know, get, great, great line, horrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying over here. And this is where we get S smart. I mean, like, I, I don't know. This is. I'm torn on this one because. You know, uh, well, I'm kind of curious to know if Dave, well, we don't want to start off on a negative, but, you know, like if Dave is down with the period pieces, because I know that you have a secret love of Westerns and uh, of, of certain clickety clackety <laughs> witches, but, you know, in those period pieces. But I'll admit that what kind of didn't work for me was I I'm not the biggest fan of where they have it set, but then every single time I sort of get bogged down by the idea of swords and torches, suddenly a monster thing will happen. Ash will do something so damn hilarious that I already I forget. And so it's once again, it's this character driven piece of cinema that just has me laughing, but maybe not enjoying it as much as I was for two. Huh. You know, I, I don't know. What, what, what do you think, B? I, I got to say, I loved it. I thought every joke landed for me in this one yeah. because it started out comical right from the beginning. I mean, and, the joke, and, and, not and, and, joke, it, I and it's a continued movie. evolution of Ash. It's, it's Ash continuing to grow and become the Ash he is now. It, it, he comes in this one and of course that is still in ash versus evil dead and this is my favorite kind of ash this cocky this is the best ash. one line spouting I ash this is yep. this is the ash i love and i actually love the time periods i love oh, the okay. setting the, it goes full ray harry house and i love all the stop motion i even love like the, the skeletons and all the battle scenes i love it it's Fantastic. hilarious and I know, Dave, we've talked about this. So I know you, when you said you didn't want to start from the negative, I know it's the continuity factor of hell, hell, and them taking a whole yeah. different approach. But they kind of give it that cliffhanger, if you will, serial cliffhanger ending and reboot where they kind of change it up. And again, this is what Watson was saying for the narrative structure of where they wanted to go for Army of Darkness. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I gave two a 10 out of 10. And I was on board from the saw it in the theater. Went like I said with that group of friends that stuck around when we watched part two on video. They came. We all checked it out in the theater. Opening night, not a big turnout, and I was amazed. I loved it. I knew it wasn't going to be gory. I knew they weren't going to go the full horror route. It's kind of a mishmash of genres, but it's mostly action comedy with sprinkles of horror. And Jimmy's of horror. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the geyser of blood is the nod to like the the cellar sequence in part two, shooting up in blood well there. But that's pretty much what you're going to get in the way of gore. The uncut director's version that uh, I've also got on DVD, uh, the bootleg edition, has a little bit more gore, but really not much. I don't even know how why they had to cut that out. Because it well, wasn't they had anything... to cut that out because they had to get rid of that awful other ending. <laughs> well... 
That other ending was also yeah. That I love the theatrical ending. In fact, the theatrical I, ending I've told is you great. guys. I've told you guys. I actually prefer the theatrical cut. One of the only times I could say I prefer the theatrical cut to the director's cut. I actually agree that the producers maybe made the right choice because there's way. If you think there's a lot of slapstick Three Stooges routine in the theatrical cut, watch the bootleg edition. You have not seen anything yet because I've never seen that. Was that the screw, he- screw head edition? No, it's not even the screw head edition. I don't even. I saw that today. Is this the, the one that's called Ash versus Army of Darkness that Ash- has the Rip Van Winkle ending? Yeah, and it, yes. and it, it, yeah. it looks okay. like it's been. I had that on DVD. Like the boot. Yeah, so do I. It, is the, it looks like it's in a brown paper bag torn yes. off the side, and you can see yep. like the original artwork behind it, but it's just a brown yep. bootleg cover. I had that. Cover. I had that on DVD, and that's yeah. one of the reasons I haven't watched this movie in over ten years because that left a bad taste in my mouth yeah, when I watched it. Release. <laughs> Theatrical release has a better pace to it. They've rearranged scenes uh, for the final fights a lot more. Uh, it, like it's 15 minutes longer, this director's cut. And the 80 minute or 82 minute version is preferable. That's my As opinion. I've said before, I don't like the, the continuity thing because it, it's kind of lazy writing. If you really wanted to accomplish something where he becomes a prisoner, that could have been done very easily. It's hail, hail, hail at the end. And then they change it in the beginning of this one. Uh, my complaint is that maybe they could have maybe maybe it was it's snowing an easy golf thing. balls snowing golf balls yeah and they were just looking up going hail 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 golf that, fanatic that was good that was good this fucking I guy I tried but they, they could have written it easily as to why there would be a a turn uh, 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 the crowd turning on him it could have been some small thing where they said oh wait a minute he's not the savior actually so, so just such oh yeah wait a minute throw him in air of the reds group it could have been done so much easier and whatever that's aha i don't like that i don't like that it's not the end of the world but that's always it's it, it, it starts off leaving a bad taste in my mouth Dave, I, I got to second that, man. I got to second that. Because how you. hard is it as a writer right. to, to just say, okay, here are the things I want to do to accomplish this. Okay, we want Ash to start off as a prisoner here. Let's go back to d- – did anybody have a copy of Evil Dead 2? Ah, shit, no. Well, what are we going to do? How are we going <laughs> to know how we ended it? And that, that bugs me on some of the franchises where you, where you get this, this lack of uh, – how, how does uh, Jeremy say continuity? And, uh, <laughs> and, and I don't know. So that, that is a bit of a, of a little more of a nitpick. So I, I'm right there with you. And, and B, to what you said earlier, I'm down with the comedy of this. I laugh yeah. my ass off through this whole film. So I'm not knocking it there. But Dave said exactly what I wanted to say later, uh, except better. So, yeah. Good job. And this oh, wow. and this one was first... also a different studio. I don't know what that would have to do with, with the continuity. But, again, here we have a third studio making the third, a third film. We're lucky Dino, to get same director and writer. You know, Dino Doesn't Laurentis matter. or whatever, and they couldn't get the certain rights to. Oh, well, they they have the ending shot, so they were able to get certain things. So they couldn't they, get the rights to Hail. Yeah, the kitchen sink wasn't there this time. <laughs> they, they just couldn't get the rights to Hail. <laughs> Fuck both of you. Uh, <laughs> Listen, let me just say, here's my positives. The, the, all the one-liners that we've just said that 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 Watson rattled off, boom, boom, boom. They're all quality. They're all good, and the skeletons. The Harry Housen skeletons. I love fucking yes. skeletons. I love seeing them walk around. Those things are the reason I watch this film. If those things weren't in this film, to me, it would be borderline unwatchable because I don't like anything else about it. I None feel like of it it, they progress sense. it pretty quick, though. They progress it real quick. Oh, it, it's a fast paced movie. This one's the even th- less than 80 theatrical, minutes. The theatrical yeah. cut. Is I mean the way that they progress. Yeah, I agree, Brandon. I, it's a fast pace. The credits roll like they get an hour and seventeen minutes, and I just was I was like, this flew by. And yet, this is the only one that I had to one point five half the film. Really? Oh fuck! Uh, how about that? Yeah, because I, I like seeing the skeletons walk up, but all those battle scenes. I don't were you, know. Were you turned he, off by him going to get the book? That scene guys, where he's got to choose between the three books and his face getting all distorted and the comedy of that and forgetting I, the last word. And it's like, I know it's an N-word. I no, know it's an N-word. No, that's and then, a what word? <laughs> he, he said this. <laughs> not not the N-word. N-word. <laughs> oh, not the, the N. Clap to the rata necktie. Yeah. necktie. The, the, we haven't even touched on that. Like, I love, my name is Ash and I'm a slave. <laughs> like, I just love the way... <laughs> I, the way it starts, like your shoelaces no, are untied. It. Your sho- no, you can't slave. stand that. No, because it's none of it was ever talked about in Evil Dead Two or One. He well, doesn't work at a fucking grocery store and S Smart and all that shit. Where was that in fucking the movie before? It doesn't make any sense. 
It's it, it, it's taking it, a movie and it's adding all this extra fucking what's well, the no, no, okay. mythology that was you never gotta, brought up before. I don't like it. It's not mythology. It makes sense. That's just Wait. like a backstory. Yeah, it's a ba- and it's, okay, that's the wrong it's, word. I couldn't. But you know what I mean. All that stuff that was being never told in the future. It doesn't matter. It, there no, was never you, any talk of Smart or a fucking him working at a grocery store until now. But that's just a character like. Oh, thing man, to, I had this figured out gun. in my head, and now I now I can't make sense of it. And I think Dave's right. I, I know I'm a, right. I think it is a big fuck up. So many things make no what sense. You, what what oh, are you guys fuck. talking about? What is a big fuck up? The fact well, that would, they just who, brought. Who could, cares? Yeah, Why? But originally, he was a college student at Michigan State. When did he get the Thank job you. at Smart? Thank you. He's paying I know for he's, his tuition, gangsta. Oh, I, okay. I buy it. <laughs> I'm down with that. <laughs> no, Dave, I'm with you because I had this all making sense in my head because at the end, he's just basically telling all the stories, all three of them. But right. they all happen in one continuous thing. Correct. So when it, did he get the job? Nothing makes sense. In this film, again, they present it beautifully. And the way that they introduce him, bring him back in, and how you get to know Henry the Red, and how they go into the pit. There's a shitload of continuity here. And they used to drive me nuts when I was younger, because I'm like, that's what's broken. Uh, like he didn't have a gun in his holster at one point, then it's there when he needs it. And, and, the, <laughs> and then the bog demon was closed in in the, in, the, in the blades within the pit, yet then suddenly it pops up later. Who gives a fuck? That's where the movie magic comes into play, and they, le- they let you have fun with it. And we haven't even talked about half the fucking great lines. You have good, give me sh- sugar, baby. But I love when he's like, she's like, I brought you this. Good, I could always use a horse blanket. he's just an asshole first you want to kill me now you want to kiss me blow right blow (laughs) right jack and shit that's a good line too jack left town that's good stuff there are good lines and the thing about what were you born in a barn yeah wait probably were born in a barn (laughs) i can give the devil its due there are some funny things those are definitely funny lines and like i said i like the skeletons but everything else just it's like there was so much con- – it's like somebody set, set out to say, let's make the worst – aside from the stuff that we've already talked about. Let's make the worst jokes we can make and make the worst fucking comedy we can make. That's what they did. They hammered it to death with fucking bone jokes and skeleton jokes. It got pain – it got groan I got a bone to pick with you. Yeah, it got fucking <laughs> groan worthy. It just got, got tiresome. A little bit fine, but it just got to be so one note with those kind of jokes. It was like – it was too much. I, I, it just, it was too damn much. I, I just don't remember when all that stuff you talked about it earlier. Somebody mentioned with the, the blood spray from the bottom. Okay, we see somebody go down there and then, and then all that stuff. You think it's How, the fucking what happened? I know everybody asks the Sarlacc pit, yeah. <laughs> right? And then a minute later, Ash goes down there and there's nobody there. There's like who's some some deformed fucking thing walking at him? How could that cause that to happen? I, I don't. I've, I've heard it all before. People are like, "What caused that to happen?" Because there's that one demon down there. What did she squeeze and him up, or whatever? Because <laughs> <Queezing> <laughs> her. She was like at the ball and, the, and Phantasm too. Why smash the mirror when they when he smashed the mirror? Why would that? Why would he do that? And and then right after that is the we need that beautiful Gulliver's travel. Because the, the, mirror, the reflection yes, the was doing something jump. different. No, yeah, the, it was. the reflection was doing something different. You looked over and it was do- it was a bad edit, and it's a bad edit in every version I've seen. I don't know what Sam Raimi was thinking there because something was off with the direction in the edit, but that's what was being relayed is that he turned, saw that the mirror was doing a bad reflection based on his experience in part one slash two. <laughs> he shattered that mirror and then created mini ashes. A little brutal. I love but it. But they've, grown, they've grown on me over the years. <laughs> I was cringing in my watch- seat. How can you watch one and two and then three and not consider all this stuff shark jumpy? I don't get that. Could you imagine watching Friday the 13th, one, two, and three and all? I just, I understand the way they ended part two. I, I get that. They had to pick it up. And, and apparently Sam Raimi wanted to do this because they could have easily gone back to the cabin if they wanted to find some other way. You know what I mean? So I just don't think it's a, it's a wise decision on Raimi's part to take this series and those two kick-ass movies and say, let's do this here. And not not only just change the locale, let's take the comedy and just freaking make it complete nothing but comedy and take horror completely out of it. I just, 
I don't well, like it. I don't get out, it. But a lot, yeah. I, the, I assume the cartoon bullet noise, you know, ping, like, like you're watching a freaking cartoon and, and the Three Stooges gags with the freaking the skeletons and all that. Oh, that was Pokemon. funny. The two Come on. This is fucking <laughs> Evil Dead. You know what I want to do? I would like to see somebody watch Evil Dead and not watch Part Two because Part Two is kind of a buffer to where it's going. I want. I should have just showed my daughter Evil Dead and then Army of Darkness just to see what the fuck her reaction would have been because to see the series go from that to that. It just—it's heartbreaking to me. Oh, it's not it's to just, me, not to me. Again, yeah, it's a love of movie I realize making. I'm in the minority. I, I, I realize. I don't know if you are. I, I, there, I think fans of the series are split. I, I think pretty evenly. I showed my son this one. Remember, I was just like, it's a little bloody, but I mean, it's goofy blood. So he put it on. And he loved it. He was like, remember, I said it on the show. Great. Put the movie on with the seesaw. The guy with the seesaw hand. <laughs> the seesaw. Uh, <laughs> seesaw. <laughs> hand. Yeah, that's adorable. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, so we did. We watched it again. <laughs> you know, Dave, uh, speaking to your point about how you see the Army of Darkness here, you know, my son and I just recently went through the Nightmare franchise, and when wow. we got to when we got to we, we actually only have uh, Freddy versus Jason to watch uh, and the remake. I, uh, but he's like, when we watched Freddy's Dead, he was like, so that was cool that Freddy was in a non horror movie. <laughs> just, that's a piece of shit that movie yeah <laughs> and so i i mean i i could see where you're coming from completely like you know when we talked about some of the continuity errors and it's funny because you, you you're all bringing up things that like dave you know that starting issue with how it starts i feel like that's weak writing but then there's so many other things about this where i just give it a pass just because you know it, it's like uh i think mike from dark discussions once was talking about you know that somebody wrote in i think and was talking about Oh, why do some people give '80s horror a chance, and 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 but they won't give modern horror a chance? And and he and Mike from Dark Discussions is like, look, we all have bullshit that we're willing to say. I give this a pass, and then there's equally dumb bullshit that we say you're not getting a pass. And I feel like this is one of those movies where I find my, I guess my, <laughs> the art of critique in it for me is like I feel like I'm floating in this odd comedic medieval bubble of oh shit, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. But if somebody were to, you know, if I had to give like one of those objective Watson breakdowns of blah, 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 I'd be like, yeah, there's a lot wrong here. And uh, I just openly admit, yeah, I'm cool with it, though. A lot. That's, e that's Evil Dead. That's yeah, evil that's Evil Dead, though. Yeah. I mean, look, why would a skeleton marching in battle in 1300 oh. AD know what a car is? <laughs> He even it's says, the guy, the guy, the guy in the, the car, car is who he wants. It's the guy yeah. in the car. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys think, though, that the tone <laughs> of the of the remake is in direct reaction to this film? I mean, it has to be. It has to be. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, they went for 100% yes. horror in the remake. Only problem is it Sam sucks. Raimi was involved in, 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 in the remake, but yet when they went back to Ash vs. Evil Dead right after that, they started doing comedy again. That was so, uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead was supposed to be officially Evil Dead. I mean, we could get into this I know. again. Ash vs. Evil Dead is Army of Darkness, but done with Evil Dead 2 gore. Well, style. because they couldn't, in and they couldn't include Dead the continuity. Backstory. Yeah. And with Evil Dead 1's backstory. Well, they couldn't include the continuity of Army of Darkness in Ash vs. Evil Dead because of, of rights issues. So that's why you never hear in the show him talk about going back in time or anything like that. He they unless it happens in season three, and I because I haven't seen those episodes he does. yet. But he oh. does, and I I, oh. I haven't watched it, okay. but I've heard a podcast. Somebody mentioned that it was kind of like a throwaway line, but it was like a tribute. Oh. Because he was saying something. Remember that? Remember that time I went back in time? Or he it was just like a line that he uh. said. So I don't know the legalities of all that and everything else, but I'm just saying what you said about it being a reaction. A reaction from Raimi or a reaction from fans of Fede Alvarez or fans of the series or whoever made it that said, well, we want to steer more towards hardcore horror like the first movie. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's a reaction from Raimi, then that would be contradictory when, when he does Ash vs. Evil Dead. That's Maybe, but it's, it almost seems like the remake and Ash vs. Evil Dead are dancing around Army of Darkness. It seems like the remake is like, okay, we're going back more toward one. Ash vs. Evil Dead's like, we're going to head more toward two. And yeah, it does get, you know, into that, uh, as far as I've seen, because I, like I said, I haven't seen season three yet, but it doesn't go quite Army of Darkness. I mean, well, Ash is Army of Darkness. Yes. But the character. content is Evil Dead 2. True. Does that make sense? Or, that's that's you know, what I was oh, trying yeah. to say. His character's Army yeah. of Darkness, but but it's with the gore and the, and the, the silliness of two. Are yeah, so different? it seems like the, the everything else that happens in the franchise after this point is sort of dancing around this film. 
which sort of makes it unique in itself, love it or hate it, just kind of an odd focal point, I, I guess. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. They wanted this movie to stand on its own, hence the not having the medieval dead title. The medieval they could have called it Medieval Dead. Holy I think crap. Medieval Dead was totally. the best name. It's awesome. Totally. But that's what Sam wow, right. wanted, but they went with Army of Darkness. And oh, it's too bad. Someone else came up with that. Yeah, that was bad. supposed to be uh, Medieval Dead. It actually says Ash versus Army of Darkness when you see the opening credits. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. yeah. Bruce Campbell as Ash versus Army of Darkness, or Bruce Campbell versus Army of Darkness. Something is, like this that. This is full on Ash at this point. Which is weird. He, Here's he don't give a something fuck. else. He wants to get home. He doesn't care about everyone else. I'll get you this book. You're going to send oh, me yeah. back. Yeah, he but remembers he's, he gets he's, mad. But he stays simply because he's in love with Sheila and she gets taken away what? by that flying creature, which was at the end of part two that he killed. <laughs> <laughs> but why the fuck not stay? If I was him, I wouldn't even care about going home. He gets there after he makes that save. He's got, he's got these freaking hot chicks feeding him grapes, and he's eating that big freaking drumstick like a like he's that Disney with the turkey leg. <laughs> yeah. his fucking, why would you want to go back to fucking S Mark? I, I there wouldn't want to live in 1300. What are you kidding me? Life he's got three naked like chicks. 25. You'd be dead in like a week. Fine, I'd, I'd, I'd be fucking these three chicks feeding me grapes for a few, <laughs> a few years and die. I'll take that over S Mark, wouldn't you? I'll take, I'll take S Mark celibacy and and Ty <laughs> Wackett and Ty Wackett. Can't jerk it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what, those bird chirps were groan worthy. That was a fucking thing. He gets hit in the head and <laughs> going around his head. Come on, dude. He went full three stooges. Oh, I like Lord, it. you would hate again. Watch it, that bootlegger version again. Oh, never. It goes I, on even longer. You. That whole that whole scene with the mini ashes is even longer than that. That's why when he pops up one point when when his head's on the stove and he pops himself up, he's covered with so much soot. He actually at that point, has gone through in a uh, in a pail, and he starts going whoa, 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 like a Looney Tune cartoon, where he's like his legs are doing that, whoa, 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 and then he flips over, it all spills on him. He hits up, hits a big vent, all this dust hits him in the face. It's all even more wacky slapstick comedy. Immediately jump the sharky, and Thank I you. love the theatrical. But that's why I I'm basing it on the theatrical cut, which is what we said we we're going to watch here. But I watched both. I actually watched this movie four times for this show. <laughs> this four movie times. Whoa. for the show. Fuck! <laughs> wow. I just watched the theatrical cut, and then I went on YouTube and watched the alternate ending. I watched and the awesome. I watched the theatrical cut twice, uh, and the bootleg version, which I have on with uh, arm, uh, audio commentary. I watched it once without audio commentary and once with audio commentary. So really? see, I didn't know I was going to be on the show until twenty minutes before you started recording. So, <laughs> but I watched it about six months ago because <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And and I'm with Watson. I give this movie a big pass. There are things that I had a problem with way back when, but I always loved it. It was I was so stuck on continuity. Like why wouldn't they do it? But then I'm like, it's a cartoon. This is a live action cartoon at this point. But it doesn't bother you that the series went to that. How could it not bother? That, no, because you've got, that's what I don't. I'm get. the one that always says if they make a remake, they make a remake. I don't. I don't give a fuck. I'll, yeah, I got the original still. I've got the original. I've got part two. Yeah, so then you just don't watch this one. What, what, what harm does it do to you? It, 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 but it's the same series. It's a one, a two. It's a part three. It's it's a continuation of a part two and a continuation of a part one. To go from that to this, I don't see how that doesn't bother you. And I, it isn't that I'm against horror comedy because you heard what I said about Evil Dead Two. That's a great horror comedy. Nine out of ten. You heard me talk about Dead Shack last week. And, yes. and how much I liked it. It isn't people think I, I don't like horror comedy. I don't like goofy, slapsticky, fucking go, goofy comedy, Three Stooges shit in my horror, especially when it's in a franchise that has not been that way. It progressed to that point. However, then, however, it, it progressed. it's more I, that I it's more that than it is straight horror. And it's yes, been yes, more that definitely. when it, or it was just the three of them. Yeah, you it like is. It or not. I know it is. I. I know. And I, I, I just I gotta be the first to say, well, not the first to say, but I just gotta <laughs> say, Ash versus Evil Dead is fucking phenomenal. I love it. Yeah. From that opening episode when he when he he gears up, he gets his girdle on, screws on that wooden hand, throws the dart, misses. Just he doesn't care. <laughs> Starts banging that chick in the bathroom. I'm like, this Hell is yeah. everything I've ever wanted. <laughs> Half hour episodes that feel like they're five minutes long. Yeah. yeah. And, and not only that, like you great. said, the comedy, the world of part two. The backstory of part one, a blend of all the with great icon, things from each of yes. the films. With, with the icon, icon Ash from, from from what we get from Army of Darkness, from we Ar get exactly. that Ash with the other setting. And 
that's a great sweet spot. I don't know what three does. I don't know how it progresses there. And I do have my problems with the series, but man, like I, I, I like, did. Oh, did you guys know, you know how Lucy Lawless is in the series? Yeah. yeah. Well, there is a comic crossover where Ash is chilling with Xena warrior princess. And I do believe it was made like a long time before the series. And I have like a picture of it on my phone. I'll, I'll pull it up and show it to the camera in a, in a minute if I can, if I can pull it up, but it's uh it's neat. It's something I found. And then, like in a comic book store when I used to go there uh, and chill and stuff like that and tr try to find horror comics. And I just like see Ash and Xeno Warrior Princess like killing evil. Well, because uh, Sam Raimi produced that. I think Robert Tappert and Lucy Lawless were married and he's uh, yeah. really yep. the so that's where the connection Ooh. is. Like, so he 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 had produced that uh, Hercules Xena oh, series. OK. Yeah. And so it would have been like no surprise that he would have been part of the comic. Can you see that or? Yeah. yeah, look at that. That's wow. awesome. Yep. I like that. It doesn't surprise yes, listeners. me that did a crossover. That's awesome. Yeah, listeners, I just showed them Army of Darkness slash Xena Warrior Princess. And on the cover, he's got his chainsaw hand. He looks like he's punching some ghoulie Muppets. And uh, <laughs> Xena's, uh, I'm in. Xena's I'm probably in. doing a flip. I don't know. <laughs> What's that sound she makes? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what Xena does. <laughs> oh, me you neither. Just it. joking. Me neither. <laughs> Were you talking about Xena or Linda going, ah! Oh, <laughs> how about K and B doing the effects in this film? I saw it at the end. Yeah. I was like, wow. I saw their names come by. I go, no shit. Granted, you know, there were some good, some good gags. I just don't think of this as a, as a special effects tour de force. You know what well, I mean? It's they, just, they did the demons. Sorry for cutting you off there, bud. No. And then they look cool. The only thing I don't like is the evil ash thing and the whole thing and them having to the, have a leader and anything that came out of his mouth. I had no interest in the sword play. I can care less about and, uh, the not, end with the, the, the kettle tea. whistle. No, not my cup of tea. The kettle whistle death. The freaking, you know, you know, and the freaking like something out of a cart. It was just too cartoony. Then the skeletons retreat. Where could those skeletons even retreat to? Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, where are they gonna go? They were they back were the resurrected back from the, the front because of the Very back, back to the bone yard. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, boot. they didn't put that joke in. That's the one bone joke they didn't put in. <laughs> Right, I can't believe they missed a bone joke. Oh. It was a Brandon joke for y'all, courtesy <laughs> Mr. Watson. Hey, Sheila girl, I got a boner. Ah. <laughs> I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> oh, this fucking film. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's pure enjoyment. It's I. It puts a big smile on my face. It's a quick watch. Yes, if you hate Three Stooges, there's going to be a couple. <laughs> there's going to be two sequences in this movie that are going to piss you off, and that's the boneyard uh, skeletons coming out of the graveyard. Sorry, and uh, hitting Ash like Three Stooges routine over and over again, and the mini Ashes uh, in the oh. in the uh, windmill. Those two Ash sequences will rub you the wrong way. So bad. Um, I, I don't hate the Three Stooges. I like the Three Stooges when I'm watching the Three Stooges. But do you when like watching a fake shim? Yeah, right. <laughs> Big <Fake> shim. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to shit anymore, and I don't want to come off as, as too much of a, a negative uh, Nancy on it, but whatever. There but, but, is uh, an iconic be. line that uh, is not in the original cut, and I don't know why this is the original line. I'm good, Ash. I'm bad, Ash. That whole that whole scene? Yeah. You're a goody little two-shirt. It's goody little two-shirt. It's goody little two-shirt. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> that part. And then he shoots him in the head. And then in the, in the director's cut, he's like, I'm not that good. After he shoots him. Which in the theatrical version has such an iconic line. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> and that's line. a fantastic line. And even Sam Raimi in the commentary is like, yeah, this this line's not nearly as good as the one we went with in the theatrical. Just Those lines are all good. Tidbit of information. I, I'm really interested in seeing where you come in on this. I, I am assuming it's hovering at around the six mark. It, what, it, I can't even go with that eye. Because what? like I said, the only, the only thing I like about the film what? are the skeletons, which I love, and Ash's one-liners, which I like. That, that that's that's all I can give. Everything else about it, I have this Blu-ray. I've owned it for ten years. I, I cracked it open for this retrospective. I will I'll probably never watch this film again. Matter of fact, if a listener wants it, I'll fucking give it on the next giveaway. I have no desire to see it again. But oh, it's I, I don't yeah. hate it. But it's for me. It sounds like you hate it. <laughs> five out of ten. It's oh, average. I got. Wow. It. Whoa. You you've cut me deep. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I try not to shit out it too much, but I, I got to be honest. I'm going to re-rate the first one again. <laughs> Brandon, wow. please. Uh, please, yeah, yeah bring it back that, to reality. I, you know, I, I feel like even even when I think back to 
me reviewing many films, I feel like sometimes I contradict myself because the things I don't like about some films are the things I enjoy in this one. And the fact that this one went straight goofy from the beginning, I enjoyed. Whereas in part two, the over the top towards the end and mixed with the bad characters kind of took me out of it. But this one, I just had an absolute blast with eight out of 10. I like it slightly better than part two right now. Watson, I'm going to give you the honor of going last again. I hope that's an honor. Oh. Anything from, an honor. from your mouth is an honor. <laughs> Uh, talk to my wife about that before you say that uh, I I'm probably going to get a little bit of heat uh, because this is going to match what I gave the toxic Avenger. I have talked about this on the show before. It was also in my top part threes of, of a series and guys, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. I, this is a movie oh, I can watch awesome. over and over and over and over and over again. It, you, it was Good on my you. favorite movie list as well. Good for way you, back you when. goofy Canadian. Yeah. That's it. I don't care. It's perfect in its loopiness. Again, it's what is presented to you. The world that they've created, I buy hook, line, and sinker. Yes, Dave, I can understand when you look at Ash from part one and what part three is. People might be going, what the fuck happened here? But I love it. I love everything about it, and I love each movie individually for what it presents to us. Presents us. Excuse me. You're really into the... The feud between the skeletons and the people, you're, you're like engaged in that, that big feud. You really care that much about him going back and getting the book. And Within the realm of the really movie. Within it? the realm of the movie. I'm, and, the, and the big picture, again, it's stupid as shit. Like pretty much everything that we've witnessed, but I care about it. Yeah, I think okay. that it's a fast pace. Again, it's got rock and roll kind of just uh, just some great ideas. I love the chemistry book and the Fangoria cameo in the yes. trunk. That's cool. Uh, the music, yep. the march of the... Death or whatever it's called by Danny Elfman is a fantastic score. And that we didn't even talk about that other really good joke about the who, ha, oh, ah, when he's when they're when he's training the guys how to fight in the montage <laughs> sequence. And then when the, the when the uh, the dead eights come in and they stop dead in their tracks because they then they go who, ha, oh, ah, <laughs> to attack them back. It's just that that's comedy great, genius. <laughs> it's just that was great. I love this movie, guys. Love it. Right? I, I, I know I loved it when I'm li- laughing at Christian's recap of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was that funny. Mr. Watts. Oh, man. Dr. Watt. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Doctor. You know, this is a film for me that, you know, as a, when, when I get into my, because I, I take like arts and film criticism very seriously, especially if I'm on a podcast and anybody's actually listening to me. And one thing I always try to be is, you know, consistent where I can. And this is one of those rare movies that makes me feel very inconsistent because there are just like Brandon said, there are things about a lot of other movies that bother me with, you know, the, you know, the the writing inconsistencies. And like Dave and I already talked about that beginning, just like automatically very first time I saw it was like, really, you're not going to even just look at the last one and see what you did. That's it's not hard. But then slowly the, the movie and iconic Ash grows on me and Ash Everything he does, you know, and like I said, I have problems with it, but it's one of those things with as, as, a, as somebody, as an aspiring art critic, I can sit there and go, all right, this is where I give it a pass and I'm going to be open. And that's all we can do. We, we, we use our words to, you know, to bridge our feelings about something and everybody else's understanding about that. And my words right now are saying eight out of 10. And I am, I give so many things a pass because I'm laughing and because I accept Ash for everything he's doing. You know, and like, but like, you know, like Dave asked the question, are you really invested in like the skeletons versus the people? And and Christian basically said what I would have said if he'd asked me is like, no, it's stupid as shit in the whole scheme of the franchise. I'm not looking at the remake and going, well, where are the skeletons? Like, you, you really didn't bring back the skeletons? You know, like, what, what the hell, Rocky, don't breathe? Come on. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, but just in the uh... scheme of this narrative, I accept a lot of the problems and it's basically just two points docked off for the writing. Uh, but I love Ash. Like, Ash is, just steps into f- his full glory here. And I, I just I just accept it. Eight out of ten. Eight out of five. And you, <laughs> and you two probably have the most realistic ratings. But, again, I, I it's just a package movie. 82 minutes, done. What a nice package, though. <laughs> the U- I was just going to say the YouTuber whose reviews I watched, Decker Shadow. Decker Shadow? All right. I don't know if people... I'm sure people know him because he's been on there for like nine years, but he does great reviews. And I watched him, and he pointed out a lot of this stuff. I'm like, holy shit, this is great stuff. I got to remember to talk about some of this. I'm going to ask a question. Does Ash do the slapsticky stuff in this film like he does in Evil Dead 2? Or or has he just become a one-liner guy? You know, like all that physical comedy he did in 2 that was so great. Did that fall by the wayside in this film or not? Because I'm trying to... 
picture. In Army of Darkness? In Army yeah. of Darkness, if you're by the wayside, but in Ash vs. Evil Dead, he's he gets beat up. Well, yeah, I, I, that's fine. I just meant in this particular film. Because what was so great about Evil Dead 2 was his his physical comedy. So that, that yeah. actually, he just became a, a one-liner machine in this film. And, and the physical comedy, which was so great in part two, fell by the wayside. Well, and actually, I didn't think about that until just now. He contorted his face for real in part in part three. That so that's really physical. How he was. Yeah, he looked like it. Frank Stallone. Did you notice that? He, did look like he Frank took that. I he, did not notice that. He, <laughs> yeah, he's on the horse. He gets hit by the tree, flies into the puddle, like almost like part two, and then of course the whole windmill scene, depending on how you look at it, where uh, it's kind of physical comedy where the evil the evil force attacks the door and he's up against it and it's it's doing that. I'm trying to visually explain it, and we're doing an audio podcast. Yeah. No, it's good. I just I wasn't trying to be a smartass or anything. I was just legitimately just it just popped into my head now because you guys are talking about his performance. I'm thinking what was so great about him in that suck. It just just it popped into my head now. Is you know he was so great in part two. What happened in part three? And I, I guess it it was kind of scaled back a little in favor of of the lines. And B. Yeah. Your your issues the whole series about uh, the random. <laughs> possessions they're suddenly deadites it was more prevalent in this one than oh anything. yeah he gets that bit he scene, doesn't even turn yeah not even <laughs> him no all of a sudden they're sitting there and this that one witch woman just all of a sudden turns into a freaking deadite it, it just comes completely out of nowhere do you know what i'm talking about uh, yeah 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 i forgot to mention that it just no, you're yeah, right just, well that, 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 that scene's right out of two and one I mean, the way that she flies up and is hovering yeah but there was no whatever. book nobody opened the book there's no, no reason for i all hear this shit i am in those other two, there's a reason. The Book of the Dead was open, and, and the, the, the chants were made. In this one, well, there's no, no the explanation. Vor- the vortex was open, so all the evil went back into 1300. So they well, were... then how come it wasn't flying all around going crazy the entire time he was there? It should have been. How come the skeletons had to rise later? <laughs> it should have been. Already been there? Yeah. Well, yeah, why is it? They still Thank were you. working with a low budget, higher than what they had before. One out of but... ten. Another plot hole. See, B? No. <laughs> anyway. It, th- 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 Eleven out of ten. Are... <laughs> all right, Lauren. <laughs> I was about to call him Ashley. I forgot his name. <laughs> Lauren Ash Williams. That's Lauren how Ashley we, da- that's how Lauren we Ashley Darling. Do, <laughs> Lauren Ashley Darling. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, we better wrap this fucking thing up and get into that remake, huh? What do you got, B? Okay, Evil Dead, 2013, written and directed by Fetty Alvarez. Five friends head to a remote cabin where the discovery of a book of the dead leads them to unwittingly summon up demons living in the nearby woods. Guys, I uh, I think I said this was one of my biggest disappointments when it first came out, and I hadn't watched it since. Uh, rewatched it for the show. I actually downloaded it to my iPad months ago to rewatch it and hadn't gotten to it. So I was so glad we were doing this retrospective, and I had the Phantasm Five feeling. I, I don't know what happened, why I was so down on it initially, because it went... I don't want to say way up, but it went up. The and... gore and the effects are the only good thing about this movie. They okay. have no decent writing, no decent characters, and no development whatsoever, and it's a fucking shit show. <laughs> I can see Is some of your points. I can see some of your points. The cinematography wow. and the direction are it's... great. Are yes. great. I'll, I'll give you that, yes. I, I kind of hear you from a writing standpoint, and again, uh, I have a feeling Mr. Watson's going to kick in. I was not down with the drug rehabilitation i didn't like that i what call me a simpleton that i would have rather just simpleton just a simple guy dave i would have hey, rather simpleton. just had them go vacation up at the fucking cabin i'll, I'll retort to that but oh, wait. no you know uh, i i actually hadn't really considered the you know the reason they're going up to the cabin much i suppose the whole troubled girl okay yes that's a cliche that is played out and from a writing standpoint, there are a million different things you could do. I do feel like that angle of the film, though, justifies why we have somebody with medical expertise among them, though. Like, you know, just like it would have been crazy if they're partying and then they're just like they're randomly drinking. And then one of them says, oh, I can't drink too much because of the test I have to study for on Monday because I am in medical school. <laughs> what do you mean? That's, that's literally what they did throughout the well, whole film was oh, tell, tell everyone okay. what's about to happen. And, I, I, and, I, and I, I don't completely disagree with that. But if you are overseeing somebody you care about and their an intervention and the detox and the rehabilitation it takes and, and, and all that, I, you know, you would have a nurse on hand, especially if a nurse feels close to her. You know, when she was a nurse, right? That it justifies her presence there. Whether oh, sorry, they were... you're not a doctor. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just, it justifies the presence of it rather than, you know, Blake Lively and the shallows. It's like, you know, she's getting hurt and it's like, she, you know, looking at the bird, like it sure is. I, I wish this were the scene. And it sure is a good thing. I have some medical expertise. She said to the bird with a smile, but like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I felt it justified her presence there. And my, my problem with this film, you know, okay. The characters aren't dynamic, but B, a, a wise podcaster once said, if you're going to remake a film, <laughs> <laughs> then remake it. And like, Watson, and listen, I swear I had that exact phrase in my head. I was going to use it on the show because that's exactly what they did. They remade it, but they completely missed the mark. Oh, no, and I'm going to tell you why. Because this ultra-serious approach to the mythos is all you can do in a post-cabin-in-the-woods horror landscape, man. Especially you. if you're not including Ash. Yeah. Like... This is the this is possibly the most violent mainstream film I've seen ever seen in theaters like since. And I applaud it for going so balls to the wall to say exactly what it wanted to say. You know, I dig Rocky Don't Breathe. Okay, I do think some things are there are some contrivances that are just more tired cliches, but I have overlooked in this franchise like blatant bad writing and continuity errors. This doesn't really give us that level of shit show. It gives us instead, yes, wooden characters, but what it fails at there, it seems to make up for in genius cinematography. God, I wish I could oh. film that the color correction, the, some of the scenes like when they're sitting out in the cabin, she's in the backyard, you see the mist and the sun shining Gorgeous. through the trees. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I can't believe like you can film that. I, and you know, I'm just, I'm so enamored with how Fede Alvarez went about with the film and the, and the violence, those practical effects. My friends, these characters, much as you don't like them, go through hell. And it's a cringe, in a good way, ride to watch them go through it. And so, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, just, I have Brandon. I, I, I'm, I, I love your more. I, I don't know. I think right from the start, it just, it just didn't, it didn't hit the mark for me. I, I like the little setup with the, with the backstory with the father and the daughter. He's trying to save her soul, so he, he burns her alive. Why does there always have to be a cabin with a thousand dead cats hanging? I don't know. That's that's the movie trope nowadays. And then the minute these characters, these five, come on screen, the relationship between David and Mia, it's brother and sister. It's a creepy brother and sister relationship because it does not play off that way. And everybody else is just very wooden. It's I, I don't like it. I mean, even Eric, he, he's the one who opens the book. He Lou sees Taylor all Pucci. Lou Taylor Pucci, who I know, I think he actually lives near me somewhere. But Spring, he was the lead in Spring. Yeah, he was in Spring. Oh, he was in, wow. He's been in a lot of stuff. He's great. But, yeah, I didn't know. but he's looking at the book, and there's only like three words in English on every page. And it says, don't read this. You'll die. You'll suffer. Please don't read this. So what does he do? He starts reading it. And then when shit goes bad, he decides not to say anything. Like, what the hell is up with this? But it's not him that the horror he goes through the whole movie, he gets it worse than everybody else. And it's the, in my very first show, I talked about what's called dispositional alignment, which is where you, you, you want certain characters do certain things and you want to see them, you know, harm befall them. And I do feel like at least him in the cast, you're sort of like, dude, I, uh, he, he gets it maybe worse than anybody might want for him to. But it totally appeals to that whole dispositional alignment theory where you're like, you did some shit that I don't like. So now as a viewer, I want to see you punished. <laughs> Actually, I was, punished. The, I was the only one praying for harm to happen to me because I just wanted to stop watching oh, it. Man, I mean, no, no. That may have been my reaction the first time I saw it, but I, I'm citing more on the watch. Watson's side here. I'm not saying that I really care about these characters, but they're functional. I was definitely more interested in them this time around, but also the fact that they played it straight and put little Easter eggs like the fucking car. Tons. Is it a remake or within the world of the actual series here? Because we have Ashley's car or Ash's car. I feel like such a hypocrite for, for, for even talking like this about this film because you guys are making good points, yet I'm trashing a newer film, yet justifying it and, and defending it in the older films. I felt like this one would have benefited from a little bit of comedy. Whoa. I mean, even some of the, the nurse at one point when Mia comes out, what, what's the nurse's name? Uh, Olivia? Olivia. Olivia. Yep. Olivia. Yes, Olivia. Mia comes out of her room. And Olivia says to everyone, that's crazy. I gave her enough tranquilizer to put a horse to sleep. Right. If you gave her enough tranquilizer to put a horse to sleep, she'd be dead. Just what kind of stupid fucking comment is that? Speech, like that is a day. stupid, that was a stupid you're, line. You're being too hard been, on the movie right now. Oh, uh, no. You are. So Listen, good. though. Okay, let me weigh in here because. Who brings a dog? Why do you bring the dog? <laughs> I tell you, okay, uh, that'll answer that too. Okay, but first and foremost. 
grandpa's fault anyway. Everything that Watson said was what I was going to say. So I'm 100% your retort to his complaints. You were going to say dispositional alignment? Or I was going to say in, in post cabin in the woods, you can't just go and do that anymore. It's just a landscape of horror now. It's, you just yes. can't drive up and say we're going to go do it. That was that. I have all these things in my notes. That for certain, the thing about Olivia having having a, a registered nurse there, there's a good reason for that. That was something else. I'm going to add to it. I'm going to even add something else about this. The fact that Mia is – there's a, a, a reason for her now to see things, and she could be discredited because she's going through the withdrawals. So there's three good reasons for everything to happen the way it does and for it to be a good plot and to be engaged in this story. All that stuff makes sense. I don't know about demon voices, though. Demon voices don't justify withdrawal. Fuck, how do they know what the hell she's seeing? She's just she sounds like a fuck fucking out. demon. Oh, later on, that's, I'm, not, I'm not talking then. I'm talking the first act when shit's going down and they have reason to believe that there's no, nothing in it. I actually, nothing is a yeah. here that it's I, I, I don't like disagree it. with 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 hating the setup of, of it being a rehab. That's fine. It's just they linger too long with not believing her. Especially our own brother, even deep in the shit, he's thinking, oh, it must be a virus from the dead cats. Well, yeah, and then they discredit it right in the film. They even said, well, that doesn't come, that's a virus. What virus makes you do that, they said. What virus makes you cut your, your face off? So yeah, they even do, someone does bring that up. And yeah, the other guy answers. like everything you, th- every time you think of something, it has to be like directly said in here to like justify that that's not what it is. Yeah, but isn't that what you want when you watch a film? So when you question something, isn't it nice to, isn't it refreshing to watch a movie and have the characters question what you would question if you were there and you as a viewer are questioning. No, because I'm questioning what the characters are doing. I'm not questioning the situation. I'm questioning why are they doing this? And then they're saying, oh, I'm doing this because this, because I know this is stupid. Yeah, but they're still giving a reason. Don't you want a reason? No, not in this case. Don't you want a reason? Don't you want an answer? No. I just want pure horror, maybe a little <laughs> bit of comedy. Okay, listen. This is the most pure horror out of all. Yeah, with a little bit of need to mix in to break break it up, especially if they're gonna have such wooden characters. I yeah, laughed but... when they said the dog's name was Grandpa. I named a right. fish Grandpa after that. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for Grandpa, this movie would have been five minutes long. <laughs> uh, and and Grandpa was there. Because yeah. you have to think of the situation that we're going in. We want her – they want her to be in, in a, a great atmosphere, the best atmosphere you could put a loved one in when they're going to be facing a difficult time. So if you're the brother, if this was me and I and I was going to see my sister who was in a similar thing like that and we had a dog, we grew up together and she loved the dog and so did I, why would I not want to bring the dog there? It's a comforting thing when, when you're going to be going through a struggle. That That's just like – that's mental health fucking 101. Why would you not want them there? And it's a cabin. Why would you not bring a dog to a cabin in the woods? They shouldn't piss outside. They're fucking happy. They sleep no, there's, in there's a lot of ticks out there. There's a lot of ticks. You don't want a dog getting bit. <laughs> I didn't see David. With, I didn't see David with any front line. If he had said when we got there, I bought the front line for Grandpa. Then okay. I'm okay. Just, just... Now B, I'm I'm gonna meet you on some things. I don't understand why those cats are in the basement. That's that's a problem. That was a question I have in my notes. Why are those cats hanging in the basement? Who were the they people? Guys? Who were the people with with the father at the beginning? I'm gonna oh, get to that in a minute. They're I good. Have, I have questions. They're good people. <laughs> that too. I have questions about the beginning and the end that I'm gonna pose to you guys that are gonna affect my reading because I've always had issues with a few small things, but I still want to once again say I agree with that and I agree with that fucking guy. Why would you cut through barbed wire and take the thing off and go through all those fucking? I don't like that at all. I just, I just wish it would have been more innocent when they opened the book, like part one and part two, when they did their thing. I don't like that any person in the world sees that shit, sees that there's already shit going down, is not going to do everything they can to open up something evil, and then do that the freaking thing with his hand. He says, <laughs> don't read these words. So yeah. what am I going to do? I want to know what these words are. I'm going to stencil just... the words and repeat them. That's what was much. that book not cool looking though? It was oh. the wor- it was the worst book. It didn't even have a face on it. It's modern. Oh. Who cares about face? Come on. I wanted a face on the yeah. book. The next has a face. Something, really... You wanted the face to be like, hi, a bee. <laughs> this one looked like a ba- this one looked like a baseball book. I thought he was gonna open it up and there were gonna be Mickey Mantle trading cards in there. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I really just had a bit of a problem with that setup, and I had a bit of a problem with the MacGyver part at the end. The rest of it, I thought, was solid. Solid. Scary fucking solid. We're talking cinematography again. There are more creepy shots of... (laughs) Thank you. 
Watson well, just yep. shot me a heart emoji. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're there are welcome. More creepy shots of of Rocky Don't Breathe as a demon in the fucking cellar that are just unnerving. The tongue As split. a camera pans oh, over, awesome. and, and, and it just sees them. Oh, the tongue split is, is yeah. Like, it's, oh, wow. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm just talking about regular regular shots, just peeking, peering through the cellar door. Oh, those you know? eyes and the way oh. those shots are composed, Christian? Perfect. Man. Amazing. That's film Which making right there. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think about the violence in this film? Because this is probably the most extreme movie I've ever shown my son to this point that is uh, just deadpan horror with this level of violence. I don't. I haven't shown him really things. You know, I've shown him the big. You know, a lot of the big franchises, but they don't feel like this and this oppressive. I think it's know? a great thing that they make made the girl made Natalie cut her hand off with a kitchen carving knife because she's a woman and she belongs in the kitchen rather than some sort of chainsaw or an axe. Like instead of going to the tool shed where a man should go. Wow, that, yeah. that's, that's a really good uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. commentary on. This is one reason why Brandon is single. <laughs> oh, and I, I love the the best line of the movie is when Natalie's when she's like normal for a split second and she goes to David, "Why does my face hurt? Why does my face hurt?" She's got four nails in her face, but not why are my arms missing? Why does my face hurt? I don't have well, any arms, but why does my face that hurt? That question yet. You're numb. I mean, she... She's numb. <laughs> She's numb. Your arms, your arms get sawed off. You don't know. You're fucking <laughs> you just, numb, dude. The jowls are a much more hard. sensitive area. That crowbar hey. smashing through the hand. Oh. I mean, just like that is. I mean, my son act like I, just like I still wince at that. That's it's fantastic effects. I mean, the, the, what it takes to make a film like that. We all gripe about, rightfully so, a lot of the time. Oh, CGI blood splatter and, and, and this this thing and this thing. This film rained blood practically, literally. <laughs> And gave us great violence. And, you know, whether or not you sit there, you know, with your arms folded as a viewer, maybe not liking the characters. And is there an appreciation for the craft somewhere in your rating, maybe? Of course there is. <laughs> okay. Of course there is. Absolutely. Just... But great effects, great cinematography are awesome. But they can't make up for a bad film. But it's not How a bad, bad film, though. It's not it, a... It, it is. Because these characters are just really terribly written. And it's just uninteresting. Who cares? How is Mia terribly written in her brother? You think that's so bad? Really? Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. I won't try to sway you. I, 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 I just, yeah. I, I don't fully agree that they're bad characters of the sibling aspect. I just, again, I just I took a little bit of issue with the, the rehab part of it and everything else, but I've already stated that though. piece. They throw in this cheap backstory. Oh, mom was in an asylum, whatever. Yeah, I, but I just... that ties in later. That's the whole thing between their. It's the, all about their relationship and what's happened historically between them. And this guy, this David guy in general, his relationship with his sister, his family, and his friends. The kind of person he is. And you're you're all about Mr. Fucking Character Arc over here all the time. How do you not see what the hell he's doing towards the end? Because I didn't buy it. I don't buy that he's a changed person. It doesn't have to be a changed person, but why not save your sister's life if you can? Why not do one good thing that's an unselfish act? Why, put her, in a red, why put her in a, in a red dress before you bury her alive? Why is he Because he wanted life? to see her naked. B, exactly. what is your problem? It was creepy. It was creepy. Because, it, no. I was kidding. Everybody because stop devil in a blue second. dress. We have to stop for one second because I know what's going to happen here. We're going to get to ratings and Brandon's going to give this a fucking 7 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> That could happen. Yeah. Everyone, thought I hated, uh, everyone thought I hated, what was it, Belko? You know how much shit I got from Belko? Everyone's like, why do you hate Belko so much? And they're like, oh, you gave it a 7 out of 10. Well, Dave hates Black Christmas, 8.5. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> you hate I'm, it. I, it's my number 22 hate. of all slashers of I think, all time. Look, I look, you got to remember one thing also. Like Christian, this is my first time. This was a first time watch. I only watched uh -huh. it once. And after watching the original trilogy, this isn't what I wanted from it. The gore... The cinematography, fantastic, but the story just, it lost me. Even even the tree scene I thought was goofy. Like, why Aww, why, why is the monster spitting up this big, like, hairball? Like, what 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 is that? Okay, listen, I, this is my question. Was, was she, I mean, like, was she my... licking all the cats in the basement? <laughs> <laughs> now that's some pussy. I, I did say I didn't like it the first time. I was disappointed the first time, so. I think you, I, I'm just going to, I want I mean, we'll continue I, talking about I it. I think you that. will be surprised. My rating is not as low as I'm, like, being angry about it. That's the fact that I wanted to love it more. Okay, I'm going to ask my question. I'm going to ask my first question now. In the beginning, why is that girl walking around alone in the woods, passing herself off as normal? This is the one who is clearly the daughter who is a, who is a who just dead killed, Who just killed her mother. Who, we, who did that? When at any point in this film 
does anyone get fucking become a deadite and then just for no reason turn back to human and, and just act normal and walk off by themselves like they're well, maybe the sun came up like uh like in part two <laughs> they do come normal right. to trick people throughout the series yeah, especially in this last one, it, ha- it does happen a lot. Mia, Mia does transform a lot back and forth, causing Natalie to go in the basement. It's like okay, it's like- so there's no issue with that. So, so uh, that that was a legitimate question because it, it's it's affecting my grade. If you guys yeah, are saying no, I, I I, I, I that's not a beef, then I then wouldn't think of that as a beef. No. Okay, well that's one. Now I always said the beginning and the end. The end. Everybody is being warned about whatever it was, four souls or five souls. And did I, did like, I write this down? What's supposed to happen? Souls? It didn't get five souls. One right? by one, we will take you. But no, what's supposed to happen? Um. Oh, here it is. Five souls and an abomination will rise from hell. It's, it's something that's so prophesied. That's something that we're supposed to fear so much that it, it literally is going to cause blood to rain from the fucking sky. You would think that this was going to be an apocalyptic, catastrophic event. And what happens? You get a doppelganger of a fucking another of the person that's possessed that can be killed with a chainsaw. Does that sound like something has, that has superhuman deal? strength to push a, push a car over on you, but can't can't crawl faster than a snail's pace? That's what yeah. I'm saying. I remember you mentioned this in was it Banana Laser or Skeleton Crew? I'm and laser, sir. you know, and I remember when that question when you when you asked that question on that podcast and i heard that episode i remember thinking to myself it would have been such a simple thing for them to add a page about when it rises it will gather its armies and and it just even adding that line and this abomination will gather its armies and then it would give this end game like a purpose and so i i, I kind of do wonder you know and i guess i wonder if you know this film is a lot more you know it's a lot more serious it's it's set now and it seems like there's at least the illusion of intention. And I, I guess I can see it being, I'm trying to articulate my thoughts here. I can see how in the previous three movies we're sort of like, ah, who knows what the deadites are trying to do, but is it just me or do you really want the deadites to have more of a purpose in this? Cause I, I know I do. And I'm kind of with you, Dave on, it could have been an easy fix to give this abomination a purpose, like, and it will gather its armies and end us all. But instead we don't, we don't get that. It would have been an easy fix. I always kind of wondered if there was a deleted scene there. Or something, you know. It seems like a simple oversight, but and the abomination will come out and push a car onto your hand. I mean, I mean maybe the book didn't say that. But it it rained have. blood. It it caused blood to fall from the sky. Yeah, that's, an, that's an awesome scene. The, it's it's amazing. Scene. Yeah, that's, that really is so beautiful. Why is the be all end all a doppelganger of one person? Just do, shouldn't it be something much more serious? You want me to get apocalyptic deep here? Because maybe hell the rising? real maybe the real Evil Dead is within inside us. <laughs> you know how I get deep in a please, don't, please don't get deep. <laughs> we drugs. were the it's evil a metaphor de- for drugs. That's we why were the kicked, yeah. You know? We were the evil dead drugs all along. There were no deadites. The deadites are our brain cells dying every time we drink a beer or smoke some marijuana cigarettes. Drug marijuana. <laughs> this was called the drugs evil are- dope, but then they did the- <laughs> evil dope. <laughs> that was my nickname in college. <laughs> drugs are evil. It was just dope. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why she's facing herself at the end, a confrontation of, of the duality of just what, what breaks us. And yeah, I, I, I feel you, Brandon. Gosh, you are good at this. Don't leave the show. And I was just making a joke. Of it, but he has no choice. That, you probably, <laughs> I got no choice. I have to stay or. Oh, I guess I could have gone either way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the joke's on me, this. everybody. Jokes no, Dave, <laughs> Dave, that's a criticism I have where I, I wanted in this film, because I feel like the violence was where I wanted it to be in relation to the other three films. The Even just the deadpan tone of it and even just how beautifully shot, even not having an Ash-like character in this, I was fine with all of that, but I wanted there to be more intention. And I felt like with the Deadites, where we were able to overlook that in the previous three films, oh, they just, I don't know, they're otherworldly, they kind of do what they want, who knows. This one, I really, I think one way I was let down a little bit was I didn't feel the evil's intention enough. It was there, it was present, it was devastating. The violence that's inflicted upon these poor kids is cringeworthy in that way that's like, yo, you just, you look away. But the purpose of it eludes me, and I wish that had been more clear. So that's a legitimate. So good, good question, Dave. Maybe, maybe they were hoping to set it up to answer in a sequel that oh, never possibly. came. Yeah, possibly. Because... Yeah, but that, that doesn't matter. This is something that's older than time. This book is old. This has been going on for a century. This is the something tale, prophesied. Someone would say it's a tale you know as old I mean? as time. It's a who? It's a tale, tale as old as old time. time. It is a tale as old as time. You're Song right. Song as old as rhyme. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's prophesized. What? I don't know it. Bronson. Beauty and the Beast. There you go. That's what oh. he was doing. That's what he was doing. He was, he was singing. <laughs> that jam. Uh, nice. But wasn't that small Star potatoes? Wars to fucking Disney. <laughs> yeah, it was. But, you know, I think the fact that it was raining blood and, I, you know, she got her last one-liner. It's raining blood. Well, she got her one-liner in. <laughs> <laughs> and then she splits it right in the middle of the face. It was a cool kill, but it wasn't was enough awesome. of a showdown. It was awesome, that, but man. I wish it wouldn't have been prophesized that way. It was fucking great. But they should have either not had such a heavy prophecy about five souls bringing uh, an abomination up from hell. Because That's that another sounds thing. Like heavy Which, shit. Who were the five souls that were taken? Guess what? The first time I saw this film, I thought there was going to be a swerve. And at the end, I thought the dog was going to be the last soul, and that's how this shit was going to go down. They're going to say, "Well, the oh dog, God, even, the dog. If, even if you count <laughs> the dog as a I soul, felt. I still think you come up short." Well, don't you count Mia? Yeah, because oh, Mia because she's healed at the end. They died and they brought her back, but she yeah, still they... died. She had to die apparently. I think that was the swerve right there. Yeah. That, oh, you know, oh, we only got four. LOL. Just J.K. Yeah. <laughs> that's... <laughs> I'm sorry because I'm gonna I'm I'm jumping over. I'm going to the, the little Easter egg, the last little Easter egg. Tons of them in this film. But what what no, but the actual appearance of Ash okay. at the very end was that just a logo love note, or was Why that not? supposed to be, uh, like was that just like a hey we'll give the fans like a groovy? It sound like it sound like his voice. Oh, it's totally him. But it was just it was him. I I was just curious as to what your thoughts were on that because I've heard rumors. That they did want to cross over these two worlds. I don't know if that's been nixed now because of the success of Ash versus Evil Dead, or if this will eventually come into play. But across, I've heard those rumors as well. I've heard those uh, those rumors as well before the series was launched. Obviously, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Who's in this soul? It was just interesting. Who's okay? Yeah, we're still on the fifth soul thing. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I don't have an answer for that. I, you got Olivia. You got Natalie. You got Eric. David never gets possessed. He just kills himself to save his sister. Even if you count Mia, then the fifth soul is what? And it's the Grandpa? dog. And I was right. Wow. It's a fucking... But Mia, wow. but Mia <laughs> came back to life. So do you even count her? And you just count Grandpa as four? I guess I'm a little confused, too. I was hoping to not have to... I, I didn't want to seem dumb, so I wasn't going to say anything about it. So yeah. I'll, I'll lick my muffin ending. Lick my grandpa. <laughs> lick, <I'll> lick my <laughs> grandpa <laughs> ending. <laughs> How about that shit? She fucking kills the dog, huh? But yeah. Like, yeah. That's fucking Yeah. Weird. Wow. Everything, That's... yeah, all the death in this, as we've mentioned, is brutal. It's More crazy. nail gun action than the nail gun massacre. <sighs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting oh, off the arm, shooting off the other arm, oh. all that shit was fucking grody. It was great. It was what? awesome, but Gore. also the fact that David built this amazing defibrillator out of his <laughs> car battery, That's but true. yet every wound he treated by duct taping it up. Was this guy going to duct tape everything? I even wrote that to you guys. Like, I, know. I was watching the movie. I'm like, he's putting duct tape on everything. Aren't you supposed to leave the shard of glass in there? He pulls it out. The guy starts bleeding to death. I'll just put some duct tape on it. Oh. <laughs> that Mac MacGyver thing is a little wonky, but Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Movie magic at its finest. I felt like I was being too positive tonight, so I had to shit on something. <laughs> yeah, of, of course you shit on Fede Alvarez again. What did I, I give to... Don't Breathe, though? What did I give Don't Breathe? I gave I it a know, six and a half. I gave it a six and a half, even though I... it's okay. stupid. And I, initially, I, I, I was at about a six, six and a half of this movie when I first saw it. And like I said, you kind of like, were like, okay, so I didn't really dig the reason why they were up there. Whoopee. Because I really liked how it played out, minus the MacGyver ending. Again, another little whoopee moment. It's not a big deal. Enjoyment level went way up on this. I really dug the fact that they tried to come back with this straight-laced horror film. I don't know if we're done talking about it, so I don't want to necessarily shoot my rating out there yet. Are there more thoughts and theories? Have we figured out this fifth soul yet? I don't Grandpa? think anyone knows. I think it was knows. me, because it zapped me of my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it was Grandpa, why would Mia... Her soul doesn't count. Oh, wait a minute. She, it does count. because she I think it possessed. does. Yeah, I think it she, does, yeah. You're right, yeah. Because she was possessed. So by killing her, by burying her, because the book even did say that. So by this killing takes place her, in a world where yeah. dogs have souls? That's kind of cool, though. Why not? Why can't a dog have a soul? Of course a dog. I love dogs. I love dogs more than people. I love dogs more than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Must love yeah, dogs. You... Must love dogs. <laughs> oh, I do. I'm, who I'm likes just, the skippy I... peanut butter? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna Ooh, give one props. I got some Skippy on my balls. Looks like you're gonna have to lick it off. He's the one that says I talk about balls all the time. This guy. Uh oh, Dave hey. froze and like uh Did he? back. No, I think he, I think he's just sitting quietly. Oh, he's moving. 
Sorry, you're about to say something, Dave, before he started talking about Skippy on those nuts. No, no, no. <laughs> I was going to say that this is a movie, a remake, that gets it right 100% perfection with the nods to the original. They do it. Uh, there's not one other remake that I can think of that does it perfectly, where even they have a little lullaby at one point, uh, a throwback to two. And, you know, they have, they, have, they have throwbacks to part one and part two sprinkled throughout this film beautifully like no other remake has ever done i have to give it a props to there are so many little ones you see the clock you see there's a bunch of them throughout this film that's how you remake a movie you, you, you stay true to the original and you, and you sprinkle in as many nods as you can that the, that the fans are going to pick up i have to give it credit for that but i will say this this remake and every other horror remake that i've seen not counting the thing on the fly i'm talking about modern you know friday halloween hell's have eyes etc dawn of the dead every one of them that i've watched for whatever reason they don't age well the more i've watched them the more they they have decreased for me and i'm not shitting on this film my, my rating is just fine but it's something that i realized watching this the film this time is that these remakes they they kind of blow you away when you first see them and then when you the more you revisit them the more the gimmick, I guess, wears off or something, and you see the film just as the film and not the remake, and you start to poke little holes in it. And that's just something I thought I'd bring up because I noticed it, you know, you think watching the soldier plays into that? I don't know, but they've all gone down for me. Every single one has gone down. This one has yeah. been the most consistent where it stayed close to where I am. Everything else has gone down, 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 down. So I'll have to give this one props for staying right around the same. So I'll just say it right now. Originally, when I saw it, I was I was higher on it. Right now, it's an eight out of ten for me. I, I enjoy the film. Well, that's good. That's exactly where I am, and that's coming up from a six, two points. Oh, wow. I went up, and I, so I don't know if it was just mood or what. Kind of like the exact same reaction I had with that fan, Phantasm Ravager, and this one. First time I watched it, I told Vince, "I go, don't bother." It was. And he's like, "I already watched it," and he said, "I was disappointed too." And we both had it on our our most disappointed of the year. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I, 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 I love the look and it, and it's scary. It, it actually like got under my skin. The deadites are scary for me. Uh, you know, the fact that it went all seriousness and all serious in tone that to me says, okay, we have to have strong writing and strong acting. And there are strong actors in this film. I like Lou Taylor Pucci. I like Jane Levy. I've recognized the other actors too. I've seen them in other things. And I know these are, quality actors i just felt like it was so poorly written and so poorly acted it just kind of took me out of it but the effects are great cinematography is great i can give you all that and i recognize that and as much as i'm shitting on this film i think you're gonna be surprised my score is not as low as you think my score is is a six out of ten okay okay and this was the first time watch originally i mean i, I gotta thank derek because derek sent me a cop an extra copy that he had for us so thank you derek from cinema attack originally i'd say i'd get rid of this movie and never watch it again but i'm gonna keep it first because he gave it to me and second because now i feel like i have to go rewatch it, especially since you guys were just blown it <laughs> was with teeth yeah you, you were gnawing on the tip of it <laughs> tip of it all right watts yeah man so you know it's funny this came out in 2013, and this was my number two of the year. Brandon, what would be your number one of 2013? My number one of 2013? Yeah. Was, was that Maniac Remake? Yes, sir. This was my number two yeah. after that. And, uh, you know, Maniac Remake for me is a, a, a 10 out of 10. And so I yes, hope you'll, <laughs> I hope you'll, free, I hope you'll, you'll still love me tomorrow when <laughs> I basically say I, I'm not giving this a 10, but you guys, I, this film, in reaction to what Army of Darkness had done in 91, so many years later, we get this 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 re-up of the franchise, and wow, it just blew me away. I find that I can watch it pretty consistently. It hasn't changed on a second watch or any subsequent watches. I find myself really solidly, like, between a 9 and 9.5, so I'm just going to call it a 9.25 for me. Just the, the violence, the, the seriousness of it. I don't like everything, that MacGyver heart, you know, the, just the, the, the defibrillator. Oh, screw that. You know, I, and I would have wanted for the Deadites to show us more purpose, especially in that abomination. The characters are wooden, but I don't mind that as much because of just what's happening around them is fine for me. In the scheme of this narrative, like Dave and I have both said in a post Cabin in the Woods, uh, Cabin in the Woods narrative, this does perfectly on that, and 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 we haven't had anything quite like it since, uh, as far as a Cabin in the Woods narrative goes. I mean, I, 
you know, Dead Shack. Well, Dead Shack is its own thing. It's com- not comparable to this, but I'm just I'm down 9.25 for me. I, I love the this movie, just the way it's raining blood, the color correction, the everything about it just s- screams beauty to me. I feel like I, I, I might have enjoyed this film more if I'd seen it in the theaters. Oh, maybe, maybe. Possibly, Did yeah. anyone it's see it in the theater? I enjoyed yeah. it at the theater. I was, I yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I, Okay. So it's Watson. You said it was your favorite series before we even came on tonight. So yes, yeah. You didn't know that when you, yeah, you you asked me. Yeah. That. Yeah, that, that's pretty crazy. And, and I will say, God, that is something. I will say, and I, I'm not sure where you all stand on this, but I'm also four for four with the Insidious movies. Although I have some big issues with this latest one, I'm still four for four for that. So this is like two franchises where I'm four for four. That's right. that's kind of neat to me because I'm usually kind of a I'm, I'm started. I'm just kind of getting uh, known as a franchise hater these days because I'm going through. It's also the the year of the franchise for us in the Watson household as well because I'm taking my son through them all. So it's year of the franchise for you guys on the show and just kind of at the house. I'm showing my son all the the franchises so I can build them up to like Leslie Vernon <laughs> and show him why that's a good movie. <laughs> nice. That's hate to show him a bunch of slashers, man. That's exactly. all you got to do, yep. you know. And I, I will say this: when I was on the show on episode thirty, was thirty six or thirty four, whatever it was. I mentioned this in the part fours. I think this was like my number two or something like that, or maybe even my number one. It was. Wow. You, said, you said we were. You didn't think we were going to allow you to use it, but I think we said yeah, uh-huh. you could. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah we you actually, said we stupid. changed our mind now. Oh. We can't use it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so what's your new number one for? What's, what's your new number one for? <laughs> wow. Oh. I love for you. <laughs> wow. I got the Chicago reference. Was that a Chicago reference? The oh, Willie, yes. Willie. Oh, yes. So, yes, they both know. I don't know. You said, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow? Oh, that's yes. Chicago? Did Chicago do that? Maybe that's the remake. Okay, I'm thinking of the one from the 50s. Yeah. Will You Still Love oh. Me Tomorrow? Think, Chicago covered that? I think Brandon was thinking of the, like, the, Will You Still Love Me For The Rest Of My, my Life? Because life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't go on. Yeah. 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 Oh, the Peter Cetera one, yeah. Peter Cetera. Yes. Yep. I saw him back in 07. <laughs> No Which shit. Which was the year of the last show we did, the the 2007 show, and I saw Peter Cetera in 2007. Wow, it's a synchronicity, Alex. You hear that, homie? <laughs> I don't know well, what the fuck just sir, happened. <laughs> couple quick things. Couple, we have to uh, shout out a couple Patreons. We have a um, Back into the Joseph show. Joseph Charlesworth is uh, is on the All Access Patreon, and Derek B has gone up a level. So he is going to pick a franchise. So not only are we picking franchises this year, he is going to. And you can too if you get on the Patreon. Oh, Patreon.com slash Exploding Heads. Yes, thank you yeah, both. Thanks, and thanks, thanks Derek. Guys, Holy seriously. smokes. What what franchise yep. is Derek? Or has he picked yet or no? He gave me a couple of ideas. He mentioned Rec. I told, he knows we covered right. part one, so I don't know. I didn't say anything. I was just going to roll with Watson it. also. <laughs> yes, with Watson again. Yeah. <laughs> He or, said wreck to me, and I said, and I and I, I didn't say anything. I was saying, who gives a fuck? Well, I'll watch wreck again and cover it again. I yeah, I, I want to watch two, three, and four anyway. Yeah, so. he mentioned possibly a trilogy and doing a basket case. I don't know. I, I'm down for anything. Blah! So uh, had to had to shout that out <laughs> really quick. I said on the last show because I happened to listen to it today that Phantom Network did not get back to me. Well, they sent me a letter. They explained they were going under. That was very kind of them because they didn't have to. They're going under, and they said, oh. you know, best of luck to you, and sorry, but, you know, we're folding. So that was that nice of them. for them, but, yes, but it yeah, does. that's awesome that they got back to you. Yes, it's, it's very cool. And Modern Horrors, they we're added still... a third show. They added uh, a third show. <laughs> not ours? Those fucks. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's some other show. It's not a show like uh, show a regular fuckers. show. It's like a fiction show or some shit like that, but it's the horror later. But, yeah, <laughs> they, they, ended up, they must have known. Oh, they, they couldn't have. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> fucking <laughs> lame. <laughs> you were motherfucking <laughs> And they added a third show. Those poor guys. So, we have nothing against you, Modern Horrors. We just, we just have to think pick you're on fucking somebody. lame. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so next show we're gonna have a drawing because we did hit a hundred. Matter of fact, that night when we recorded and we were talking about the iTunes, uh, when we got off that night, we saw that we hit a hundred. So next show there will be a big drawing. So anyone is listening now, get involved because next show we'll have a big drawing up for the iTunes. So congratulations, that's fantastic, guys. Amazing, ah, huh? thank you. Yes, wow, thank you. absolutely, yeah. especially since I can't spit works. out a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> No, Doesn't that just make you this. boil, Watson? Like, these fuckers have a hundred. <laughs> oh, you guys put out shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We, and we solicit like motherfuckers, you know? <laughs> and one more thing. I want to shout out a show, um, The Anatomy of Fear. 
And I know yeah. you want you know about them, Watson, because they said that they contacted you because their show. They were they were frightened. Oh, not frightened, but they were they were they were like, oh my god, our first three episodes are exactly like this whole <laughs> corridor guy. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're great. I talked with cool. uh, Brandon. Yeah, I talked with yeah. Brandon a lot. They're great. Th- thanks for shouting them out. I-, I like those guys a lot. Oh, I have to shout them out. I got to give them props. Good show. Uh, intellectual breakdowns. Uh, good shit. Check them out. Um, and they they gave me props. They they talked about Second View Dave. So yeah. <laughs> it, it's spreading. Yeah, Dave Z's Second View. The uh, other people are are talking about it on their podcast. So bravo. Thank you. <laughs> so there you go. So I, I guess that's it. I don't think there's anything else. We have to thank. Uh, our homie, Mr. Watson. What a great fucking, what a great thing to happen tonight, huh? Well, Thank yeah. you. What an awesome surprise, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Same for me, too. <laughs> that, was a great, that, was a great, that was a great surprise, Dave. Well I, I thought, I was like, what the fuck is this icon popping up on my thing? <laughs> and I saw it was Watson, and I'm like, oh, no. Am I going to get to talk? Yeah. Hey, I, I was just saying, no. I'm back tonight. <laughs> no, you were very quiet. I felt bad. I was Rip like, one. I want Watson to no. go full Watson. And when you talked, though, man, you went full Dr. Watt on us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I have to look up. I wrote down a bunch of words I got to look up when we get off. Because <laughs> I didn't understand them. Masturbation oh, first. <laughs> no, masturbation I fully understand. Them, yeah. fortunately. It's a way of life. Yeah. Oh, sure. oh, that reminds me. Yeah, I got to do something with my my uh, my camera when I finish here today. Where is this so going? when I do my thing, he wants to get his lens enlarged so more people can see. <laughs> I got to put cake batter on it, like in the visit. You know. <laughs> yeah, one of those fish eyes. <laughs> <laughs> something. Holy shit. Uh, wow, another but... franchise down the shitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're the franchise. <laughs> and great times, uh, guys. Don't forget to check out Mr. Watson Horror Corridor. Awesome stuff. Thank you, sir, for thank joining you. us. Yeah, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Am yeah. I the first return guest? You are. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And in and 10 months from now, JP's no. going to be real upset. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 10 months from now. 10 months from now, JP's going to be pissed. Ooh. <laughs> uh, all I can say is we we have to blame Kate Jerkett for this whole thing tonight. <laughs> we literally do. Yes. Yeah. Good old Kate, Kate Jerkett. Jerkett. Oh, <laughs> all right let's get out of here we don't know what we're doing the next show no clue probably something fun something mellow the show after that will be a return to a probably a franchise because that's what we're yeah, doing that's what we're doing is right yeah that's what we're doing i don't know why rodney dangerfield threw all, of all of a sudden hey you went from dice to fucking rodney you're oh, okay <laughs> uh, so thanks, anybody have buddy. any uh final uh final words or anything before we get out of here I literally just want to say, literally, thank you to all the listeners, all the supporters. Get on the Facebook page. Let's continue to grow that page. I love it. I know I, know I keep saying I'm going to be more active, and I'm not, but I- I'm coming in my pants. Right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is it horror? We got the is it horror votes going on. Yeah, right? the is it horror polls are, have been interesting, and, and I can't wait to do that show. That'll be fun. That's what exciting. we're going to do is we're going to steal the uh, idea of what is horror from uh, Horror Corridor. <laughs> episode one yeah. or two hey, or whatever it was no we're not doing what that because horror? i tried to recite that the next show after we heard you do that and christian like ripped me a new one because i was like and he's like no that is completely not what he was saying you're a moron shut up i don't remember this at all i think i recall you called me a moron or tell me to shut no. up i was trying no. to say oh what watson was saying is this this isn't you're like you totally missed the ball. I don't think I've ever said that to you. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys were polite about it. I recall this because you guys were some of the first people even talking about me when I came up on Horphelia. And so, yeah, just and thanks for that. Just And again, thanks for having me and always just your continual support as friends and, you know, and as, you know, just good, good old buddies. One love, homie. Thank mm-hmm. you. One love. Right on. the, I don't even One know what he's talking homie. about. We never know how to end a show. <laughs> we never do. We never do. That's one a weakness. show or end the show. Uh, we never, well, let's weakness. all just universally say good night. Join us. I'll swallow you whole. That was way better than good night. <laughs> <laughs>